Welcome everybody, alongside Ben Parsons, I'm Jack Taylor, and we're here for game, uh, week two, excuse me, <laughs> of uh, Gamecock Hockey here at Irmo, South Carolina at the Plex, as the South Carolina Gamecocks take on their bitter rivals, <laughs> the Clemson Tigers. Yeah, Clemson is always a force to be reckoned with, and whenever we play them, it's a close game. Uh, you have to look out for Rakiko on the ice out there. He's going to be their leading scorer, and their goalie is pretty good as well. Uh, he's actually tied with another one of their players. They're both tied with seven points on the year, with both having five goals and two assists. But uh, the Clemson Tigers are coming off strong. They're 2-0 and against uh, UNC Chapel Hill and Duke, where they averaged 50 shots in both games. And uh, <laughs> they only let up, out, out of the two games, they've only let up, they've given up, or they've, excuse me, <laughs> they've had 19 goals and only given up two. So uh, the Gamecocks are in for in for a treat here this week as they're, they're gonna, their defense is going to have to step it up. Yeah, they're definitely uh, in for a treat, like you said, because their offense is great. They're, they are able to score in bunches or in drones, like you saw last week when they played. Granted, it was UNC and Duke. They don't have the best hockey teams, but they played in Greenville last week in a tournament, and they dominated. So the Gamecocks are really going to have to be on top of their game. But speaking of the Gamecocks, Bobby Lombardi is in net. How do you think that's going to help? Well, I think, I mean, you could see it in the third period of last week's game. They were down 6-1 to one up until that period. And uh, not to put anything against Ward, but you could just see there was, a lot, there was a whole different sense on the ice. There was more communication. There was more aggressiveness on defense and on offense. So yeah. I think having Lombardi back in net, Allowed them to do, allowed them to perform better. And, and Coach Sirwa, he said it wasn't anything personal. <laughs> he just thought that Ward was getting beat up on a little bit, and that he wanted, obviously, you know, Bobby to to get some reps in. I mean, the the, the Gamecocks they faced a tough loss last week. Um, it was six to one most of the game. I think they ended up losing seven to five. Yeah, they came back in the fourth to make it. I mean, third. <laughs> they came back in the third to make it seven to five in that in that game. But but gra uh, granted, in that game, uh, yeah. they weren't playing with their full squad. No, they weren't playing with their full squad because they were. Uh, Sir Waugh mentioned that he was resting up for the big game, of course. But the one thing that really held Ward out to dry was the defense in that game because Ward played solid. He was solid for almost all of that game. It's just the defense were not in place at all. It also didn't help that they were very, very, uh, I'd say, sloppy when it came to how they handled themselves against the other team. I think uh, they had around almost 15 to 17 minutes of penalty mm -hmm. time last game. Uh, most of it coming from uh, from um, Alex, Alec Martone. <laughs> he had uh, 12 minutes in the penalty box last game. And so we uh, talked to Coach Sirwa, asked him what he was going to do to you know, make sure that they kept their heads cool yeah. against, of course, their bitter rivals and make sure that they don't have 20 minutes <laughs> and, in the box before they even get on the ice. And he, <laughs> and he kind of smiled and he kind of smiled for a second because he knows that's something this team's known for. They don't always, they aren't able to keep their cool a lot and they get silly penalties. It happens. It happens in games like these. I, I would, I would be remiss in saying that they're not going to have any penalties tonight. There's going to be at least five or six early on um, combined between both teams. These two teams love to get at each other. Exactly. As long as they all aren't from Martone. <laughs> but uh, other than that, so we did say they had the full. They have the full lineup. Uh, people that the only one that they're missing is um, Hawkinson. Corey Hawkinson yeah. is out three to five weeks with an ACL strain, mm -hmm. so uh, he's not on the ice today. But uh, Nick Pizzo will be back on the ice today for the game. Cox, Alex Kranis, um, and more importantly, and most importantly, as we've said earlier, is a Bobby Lombardi back in net for the whole duration of this game. And then we did find out who 25 was last week. <laughs> that was Hawkinson. Yeah. And uh, now he's he's going to be number five. And um, who's number three? Drummond. Drummond's going to be number three. But I think but he also said that they might be switching. They might be switching next week. So we'll keep you updated on that as we go forward. The team likes to keep us on our toes when it comes <laughs> to commentating. All right. Well, uh, the Gamecocks are going to be on the ice out here in a few minutes. So uh, when we come back, it'll be the start of the game.
and we're back. South Carolina Gamecocks are warming up on their side of the ice and so are the Clemson Tigers. Down on the ice, we have our own sideline reporters, Kayla Pace, Jordan Beaner, and Brandon Hunter that will be giving us, you know, stats as the game goes on and helping us with some of the calls that we can't see from up here. Yeah, they're invaluable because it's very tough for us to get every instant update because hockey, as you know, is a very fast-paced game there, Jack, so it's great that we have those three on the field. Exactly. Now, we talked to Coach Sirwa, as we said before, and he just talked about some of the keys of the game. What did you think the most important key for this game was for today? I think the most important key to this game for the Gamecocks would be to keep their heads. I mean, that's something they've struggled all throughout the last couple of seasons. We've seen it. Um, but I would also say the key for Clemson in this game is to make is to make the Gamecocks lose their head because when the Gamecocks lose their head, their defense becomes more open and they will be able to pounce on wide open opportunities. But I also think that this rivalry, it's a two-way street. Yeah. You know, it takes two to tango, so they got to make sure they keep their own heads you know, under the, under the level because we, as we've seen, especially I remember the USC Florida game last year at Nashville. <laughs> Because that was the, I was in the, I was in the box for yeah. that game, and it was, I was terrified. <laughs> I couldn't tell you half the words I heard there, because I'm not allowed to say that uh, on broadcast. Also, also, I remember a couple years ago when we had the melee at the Plex, it was against Florida again, when Tangy and everybody started throwing hands. But let's get back to this game. I'm very excited to see how these two teams face off against each other. I am as well. It's two high-powered, well, we have one high-powered offense. We're still going to see, we haven't <laughs> seen our full, the, I mean, we haven't seen the full squad for the Gamecocks yet, and it'll be interesting to see how, you know, if the chemistry is still up for the team as of last year. Yeah. You know, it's been a while since they've all played together. Mm -hmm. There was still, you know, I mean, you had Martone and you had, a, like, Lombardi coming but you didn't, late. Yeah, you but you didn't have Pizzo. You didn't have some of the other big names that we normally have. And uh, this is a record for us, but they also don't have Kyle Ware out there this year, so it's a record in not saying his name so far. I was going to say, we can't, we can't talk about Kyle Ware that much. <laughs> but uh, the Gamecocks are both going to their side. Both teams are going to their benches and getting ready for the game to start as they line up to get ready. You can really hear, oh, the players <laughs> I think he, he lost his skate right there for a second. Did he lose it? Like, it, I think it flipped off, but he fixed it real quick. It's Duncan Hickman. <laughs> Gotta love Duncan Hickman right there. Yikes. Yeah, he was playing last week, too. It was nice to see him on the ice after being, he was gone for a year, I think it was? Or? Yeah. Um, I do, another thing that I do like, sorry for cutting you off there, is that the atmosphere for these games are incredible. The benches are packed tonight with both Gamecock and even a little bit of Clemson fans, of course, but like the Gamecock faithful really came out to support the Gamecocks tonight. And I think that's something that really shows how special this club sport is mm -hmm. to the campus. I mean, not to say that there aren't, because when we covered lacrosse last year, there was big crowds for that too, but I just think it really shows. I don't think you get that in a lot of other schools that people care about. I mean, for either one of these schools, because the amount of Clemson fans that traveled here is pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think the same thing. And you can hear some of the screaming coming <laughs> down from the crowd as we're trying to, you know, hopefully our mics don't pick it up. And we're sorry for if they do throughout the game because they will, some of these screams. Well, but hopefully we'll also be hearing a lot of cowbells. I haven't heard the cowbells yet. I don't know where we're... If you're not able to see, they are doing the Clemson lineup right now. The and starters are coming out, so that's what I'm losing for. Yeah, they're announcing the starters. That means they have a PA guy tonight. Look at that. We didn't have a PA guy last week, did no, we? No, we didn't. We did not. All right. Okay, well, the lineup is just the starters coming out for Clemson. Some of the players we see out there, number 17, Isaiah Jackson. We have a number 11 also. That's uh, Andrew Rassico. Mm -hmm. he He's the guy to watch. He is the guy to watch. He is tied with, um, with Chandler Path. Mm -hmm. They both have five goals, two assists, and seven points in two games. So that's... Uh, it's going to be big. Those are the players to watch. Gamecocks starting on the right now. Number 17 for the Gamecocks. Jim Hatton coming out. We also have number 21, Ian Schneider. Yep. Coming on the ice. Number 8 for the Gamecocks, Jake Kenji. We're going to have another big game this week. 13 out of my tone. We're going to stay on the ice this week. <laughs> and last but not least. He had, I think it was. 12 minutes. He had 12 minutes of penalty time last week. Uh, last week. And uh, last. Bobby Lombardi. And a couple other ones, and now the uh, the national anthem is starting for so, the team. I don't like the fifth we play. We're supposed to. We didn't have a national anthem last week. We didn't either, so that's how you know it's definitely a big game. I was say, was last week even a real game? I don't know. Uh, we, it, we didn't have our full squad out there. So the the Gamecocks, Gamecocks, they don't want to count it. Yeah. <laughs> now, what do you think coming off of the Gamecocks in the third period of the last game? Mm -hmm. they, you know, they started to show signs of offense. They started to show signs of being able to score points. How do you think? What, what are the keys do you think that they need to carry over 
the way they played in that period and just starting off this game. They need to continue to have great breakouts because that's what happened in the third period last week is that they broke out and got down the ice in a quick way and had on-man breaks, and that's how you score. They also need to get a lot of teams in. I mean, they got to get a lot of players in front of the net because the more net traffic you have, the more likely it is you're going to get a goal to squeak by the goaltender. Mm -hmm. A couple of players that didn't dress out this week, uh, Evan Hoey, number two for the Gamecocks, was out Siegfried. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as we said earlier, uh, Hawkinson did not, Corey Hawkinson did not, uh, he was injured for three to five weeks. So uh, hopefully his recovery goes well and we'll be seeing him back here in a couple weeks. As long as he's ready for Nashville, I think he'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, um, like I said, Clemson uh, is, a, is a big, is a big, is a, is a big high power offense. Yeah. Uh, scoring 19 goals in two games and only giving up two. Mm -hmm. That's going to be something that the Gamecocks have to start off strong with if they're going to want to get any leg up in this uh, game. I'll tell you one thing: it's definitely going to be a physical matchup, as it always always is between these two teams. Always in any sport. It, In any sport for the, you know, the Gamecocks and the Clemson, the rivalry is always there, whether it's volleyball, equestrian, women's uh, soccer, men's soccer. I mean, there is just always no, fire and competition be, uh, more in whatever sport they're playing. Bobby and Barty's playing. So if you turn us up, it's going to get to us. He's looking nice and limber right there. As uh, Sam yes, Storm is starting, fans are doing a little the fans are doing their, you know, celebration, even while they're sitting down. <laughs> Both teams coming out to center ice for the puck drop. Number 17 for the Clemson Tigers comes up to play something that's Isaiah Jackson. For the Game Cox, it's uh, Tenji. Tenji wins it for the Game Cox. Passes back to 22 for the Game Cox. He passes it out to 17. Tries to slap it around. Kind of hits the goalie's hand, I think, off of his fingertips. As they try to get something going on offense. They started out fast, which is nice. A big hit on the wall, and the crowd goes wild for that one. They like the, uh, the physicality from their players. What did you like from the Gamecocks in that first starting couple seconds? I loved the way they came out. They were already pressuring the puck, and they didn't let Clemson get in the offensive zone. They forced the puck all the way down to their ice. I mean, they didn't get a one bounce to go their way, but other than that, they came back and fought hard on defense. I'm not sure who Duncan Hickman was trying to pass it to there. <laughs> it looked like it just kind of hit off the post of the goal, but uh, puck's back in the center ice, and they're going to be ready for this next face off. I believe that's is that 20 for the Gamecocks? I see cannot it. see. Well, he won it. Number 10, so ben Smith. That's Ben Smith. You know that name, don't you? <laughs> we sliding behind the red line on the Clemson ice. A couple big hits for Gamecock and Clemson players, but eventually after some fumbling with the puck, the Clemson Tigers recover. Nice throw for the Clemson Tigers, but blocked by Bobby Lombardi. Puck flies over again to Lombardi, recovered by the Gamecocks, coming behind the left zone. He hit, he hit Smith in the, in the leg, and that was a miscommunication. <laughs> Seven for the Gamecocks hits it off the wall, passes it to, tries to get to Ben Smith, but it's intercepted. Came, uh, Clemson Tigers have it in their own zone, trying to get it back on the other side of the ice. A pass, a pass from number 12 to number 11 for the Tigers. Number 12 for the Tigers hits it off the wall. That's Jimmy Tallo. Gamecocks recover, passes across the other side of the ice, where number 9 is there to recover. Again, tries to get the stop. Oh, yeah. Don't have a number nine for the Gamecocks. But what an opportunity right there. The big hit opened up a passing lane, and they had a one-on-one -on -one shot right there. Point-blank save by the Clemson goaltender. Bobby Van Dusen. I haven't forget about Bobby Van Dusen. Substitutions being made as the new Gamecocks come out on the ice. Gamecocks still have possession. But the Clemson Tigers with a, nice, with a poke check quickly take back possession. Mike Forrest, he laid out the Clemson defender and got possession for the Gamecocks. And that was a strong, a little bit of a, a strum, I guess, on the wall, you could say. Yeah. It was a rugby term, but I think it still applies. Gamecocks trying to fight for the Clemson 23. Got the Orr, trying to get something going, but to no avail. <laughs> Clemson Tigers quickly passes it. It's a no touch down, guys. Big poke uh, check from, from a Gamecock. What a pass. With a nice blister into the left side of the net. Right in the corner right there. That was, <laughs> it was exactly the way you want to start out right there. They had pressure. They had everything. They got the puck on a quick break. And the, that was a perfect shot right there by Boris. They have a 2-1. 2-1. Two two uh, is that, that, that's how that works? Yeah. Two, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought. Uh, and they took advantage of it. And... Um, Nice shot from Boris. 
With 17.36 left in the first period, or left to play in the first period, the score is Gamecocks 1, Clemson Tigers 0. I'll tell you one thing, I love the way the crowd got into it right there. This is, that's the loudest it's been in the Plex in quite a long time. Oh yeah, you can, in fact, we're going to see a little possession one for the Gamecocks. Oh! So as quickly stopped as the ref calls an offside on the Gamecocks. Mike Forst had won the, uh, had won the, uh, excuse me, not Mike Forst, uh, Jake Tenji had won possession for the Gamecocks, but now they're going to have a face-off at the blue line for the Clemson Tigers. Tenji up again for the face-off. Number 14 for the Clemson Tigers. Again, it is. it was won for a second and then recovered by the Gamecocks. Tenji has it, passes it out off the wall, trying to get it to, to Martone, but it's quickly intercepted. Knight, oh, and a big hit for Martone. As the Gamecocks try to keep momentum on their side. Tenji, the Gamecocks passes it through the air all the way to the other side of the ice. And that'll be icing for the Gamecocks. I'll tell you one thing right there. Uh, the Gamecocks' intensity is definitely showing up in this game. The one thing that's happened right there is Duncan Hickman lost his skate, and that almost cost him. But that was great help by, I didn't catch the number, but I would guess it's Ian Schneider. I got to tell you what, the martone has got to watch himself. That's his <laughs> second big hit. I mean, his puck was a little horizontal. I mean, his, excuse me, his stick was a little horizontal there. Tenji up again for the faceoff against number 11. Tenji loses it. They Game uh, excuse me, Tigers try to get a shot in, but too many bodies in between the puck and the goal. 11 for the Tigers has it. Defender falls on the ground. Nice block from 17 for the Gamecocks to stop that puck from going in the net. Country Tigers still have possession behind the red line. Recovered by the Gamecocks. They try to fly down oh. the ice a little bit too far. Just missing Martone. And that's yeah. another stop in time for the Tigers. What do you think is... How do you think the Gamecocks are kind of suppressing the Tigers right now? It doesn't seem like the Tigers have built up any momentum. Yeah, the Gamecocks are really pressing hard at the blue line. They're not letting uh, Clemson get into the offensive zone easily, and that's exactly what you want to do on the defensive side of the game. Another icing for the Gamecocks, and again, Captain Jake Tenji is up for the faceoff, but I think he's a little too jittery, and now they bring in Martone for the faceoff. Martone's able to win the faceoff for the Gamecocks, coming by number 17. <laughs> He passes all the way to the other side of the ice. Martone regains possession for the Gamecocks. Slips through a pair of punch defenders. Tries to get in the back door, but he misses. Recovered by two Gamecocks as they both try to get the puck, even though they're on the same team. <laughs> uh, fighting for possession on the wall. Both teams are trying to get it. Gamecocks finally recover. Number seven, I believe it is. He tries to sling one in the back door again, but it's recovered by a Clemson defender. Coming to the other side of the ice behind the red line. And Gamecock defender just misses it. That's number seven, seven, I believe, yes. That's a Grayson Curry for the Gamecocks. Who will cover possession for the Gamecocks. Missed the communication from the Gamecock players as they missed that pass. And the Clemson Tigers are able to try to slap one down. But it goes wide left behind the red line. Gamecocks recover. And after a missed pass, and number 10, Ben Smith going in the round. Gamecocks still recover, though, as uh, he grabs in his hand. That is uh, Curry who has it. Curry's trying to, trying to dance around the... Tiger defender, but to no avail as the game as the Tiger gets a stick in there to stop momentum. Pass off the wall from the Gamecocks. 18, number 18, that's Ian Powderly flying down the ice. And there are too many defenders in between the two. Clemson's trying to get the puck out of their side of the ice. And it flies, I believe, out of play. I'll tell you another thing that I've been catching is the Gamecock stick handling stick handling so far has been phenomenal. The only thing that's been a little off at times is the passing on their stretch passes to get in the offensive zone. But I like the way they're trying to push the puck right now, Jack. Exactly. You can still see some, some miscommunication. They're trying really hard. Trying so much that some of their players are falling down. They're not even <laughs> trying. Alex Kranis is out for the face off for the Gamecocks. He loses possession but quickly tries to get it back. Or is it, I think a shot, but it was wide right of the goal for the Gamecocks. <laughs> Behind, and that is icing for the Tigers. See, Kranz is back in for the Gamecocks. He didn't play last week, but he was there. Still showing his support for his team. Number nine comes in for the Gamecocks. That is uh, Bobby Van Dusen. And, and uh, see, we got number four. Number 14 is going for the Gamecocks. Nick this, Pizzo. This just in from our sideline reporters, Jordan and Kayla. Uh, apparently on the goal, they gave the assist to Sean Davis. Good for Sean Davis. He had... The most, he ha he's leading the team in points with one goal and one assist off of last week's game, so that's another that's another point for him this season. Bit of a tricky pass from number three there. That's <laughs> uh -oh. a, that is Drummond. As the puck flies back, hits the back wall. 
Clemson player tries a little bit too hard. Ends up falling to the ground. But he uses his legs to try to stop 23 for the Gamecocks. Flying over from the game possession. But eventually, and again, it's another player that has just fallen on the court without even being hit. Hey, skating is a little tough. I can't do it. <laughs> Number 14 for the Gamecocks, that is uh, Nick Pizzo loses possession as the Clemson Tigers try to get something going. Hits it off the ice, almost hits the Gamecock bench in the face. <laughs> Number 12 for the Clemson Tigers, has it behind their own line. And a pass interception from Kranz, but he hits it, passes it to no one, and the Tigers are able to recover. Sliding behind the wall. Turn it. But he trips up and loses the puck as the Tigers are able to recover. I can tell you one thing, Coach Sirwal is not happy on that hit. What a juke from the game, Cox. But he just missed the net. That was Martel with a nice little saucy little footstep there. Looked like he should be on the gridiron instead of the ice. <laughs> Gamecock still out of possession. What a pass. Tenji passed it. A little left of the goal, but they weren't able to get anything out of it as Gamecock tried to keep possession. 15 for the Gamecocks comes in. That is Sean Davis again. And he, try, he passes it out, but Gamecocks just give up possession. Tenji lost it. New player again another round of substitution. Jeff Deshev, she's coming up for the Gamecocks. A lot of big hits. Right in front of the net from both teams. And the crowd, you can see, is loving it. Another They're lining the entire ring. Mm -hmm. oh, that was another great A great, uh, chance for the Gamecocks right there. And that was one, too, from number seven. Just too many bodies in the uh, in between the puck and the net. Interception from number seven for the Gamecocks. That is Greg Curry. As the Cubs and Tigers swing it over in here. Try to get something going. Pass is covered by Sean Davis. I'm quickly flying out of play. Now, Ben, I think I, like I said, or like you said, excuse me, there was just a bunch of miscommunication, a bunch of missed opportunities. How do you, like, what do you do better to make sure um, you don't miss those opportunities? You've got to be a little bit more concise because, yeah, the Gamecocks have the puck in their zone a lot, and they're just not capitalizing a little bit on their goals. They've definitely started the game the way you want to start a game. It's just they keep on getting more and more chances, but it's still a, only a one-goal game. Ben Smith wins possession for the Gamecocks off the faceoff. 18 recovers, tries to get something in there in the back door, but it, the, the, uh, the goalie for the Tigers quickly just taps it away. Gamecocks again keeping possession on that side of the ice, trying to get something going behind the red line. Missed pass, one shot from number seven for the Gamecocks, but hit off the body of the front of the <laughs> gets hit on the wall, loses possession, and comes in recovers of the puck, five behind the red line. They're on top, they're trying to keep the puck on the side of the ice. The, the four check for the Gamecocks has been incredible so far. Exactly, and that's what you want to see starting off strong in this first period. Big hit from Ben Smith, and he tries to keep possession on the side of the ice, number 12 for the Gamecocks has it going behind the line, tries to get one in the back door, but it hits off the knee of the goalie. Number seven tries to hit one in the air, I think that's uh, Curry, but uh, it's tipped off the hands of a Clemson defender. Clemson's flying down the ice. They have two, not a two and one. It's all. Good block right there. <laughs> and the fans <laughs> are showing their opinions. The Clemson players. Stop the time for the ref. Let's see what's happening. I think we're going to get a penalty I think on, it's be on 18 on, on the Gamecocks. Oh no, I think that might be interference on Clemson right now. Let's see what, let's see what happens as we get a call from the refs. Pointing over to Clemson's on. Yeah, it's going to be a Clemson interference penalty. It's on, it's on number 10 for the Clemson Tigers. That is uh, Justin Borgie. Yeah, that'll start the power play for the Gamecocks. Yeah, never mind. It's a too, it's a too many men on the ice. They accidentally had six forwards right there. You don't see that very often in hockey. Ah, you do. Teams really? slip up every once in a while. Because you don't see it very often in other sports. Yes, you I do not. I don't see that much, so I haven't seen it. Shrepsi, I think, is sitting on the puck right now. He was trying to win the possession for the Gamecocks, but he ended up stopping the play. Seventy for the Gamecocks has it, tries to get one in, but there's too many bodies in between. One time from Fairness, but he's just a bit off. The Gamecocks again, trying to get possession. The body comes out of the net, passes it to 17 for the Gamecocks. The Gamecock faithful love that one. Oh, yeah, they like, 
like to see whenever Lombardi comes out of the net. <laughs> Even though it kind of gets the coach's heart racing, but fans seem to love it. Patton has been a game cock behind her. Nice pass, but just misses. As there's again more and more miscommunication from the team. Because is going back to get the puck. With a minute 15 left in the power play. 10 minutes, 41 seconds left in the first period. Sexy going down the right side of the ice. Pass it to Krenz. Krenz was paying attention. <laughs> 21 for the game. Cox covers, keeps his drive going. Passes one in the middle. Right with the hands of the, the, the goalie. Tigers recover. A big hit from number 17 for the Tigers. Knocks out the game. Cox under on his butt. On that last breakout, Clemson thought that that was going to be offsides. They had uh, players pointing, but luckily for them, the Gamecocks didn't capitalize on the on-man break. Turning for the Gamecocks, flying down the ice, across the center ice, behind the red line, going across the goal. Then passes one back to, I believe that's Kranz, but I think it also might be 24, 24, excuse me. That's Dave Conkren, tries to stop this. Pass back to Dave Conkren. He's got to get everyone back so as to not have the offside. Terrible mistake right there. Definitely an, unforced, an unforced error. Nice, nice play from Tenji. As he gets, he's knocking players on their feet. He's making them trip and fall, but he just takes the shot and goes a little bit over the net. Yeah, the, the shot went off a of Clemson stick right there and then went over the net. Puck flies out of play for the Gamecocks, and I believe it'll be possession. But I, I think, it, I mean, for the game, uh, Tigers, yeah. it'll be possession of the Gamecocks on the offensive zone. Yeah, I do I do like the intensity they have on the power play so far. They w haven't been able to ca capitalize, but they definitely kept the puck time in their zone for that. See if they can get something within these next 11 seconds. Fence will try to win the possession. But he it does. It's off the boot. All the game, all the one right there. <laughs> like that's not the best. Hits off the boot for the skate, excuse me, of the Gamecock of the Tiger. No trouble for the Gamecocks, has it behind the red line, tries it on the back door. The great team has it, it's just a little too high, and into the crowd. He tried to go back short side on that goal, but on that uh, shot opportunity, but I do have to say that was a nifty little uh, kick uh, pass by, uh, I didn't catch the number, but that was definitely a nifty little kick pass right there to keep get that break going. That was Ian Patterly's second shot that was just a bit too high to go in. But that's the end of the power play for the Gamecocks with 9.14 left in the first period. Momentum still seems to be on the side of the Gamecocks. Knock on wood if you have it. Number 12 for the Gamecocks is going up to the faceoff of Jack Watson. As he wins possession, he flies on the other side of the red line. Gamecocks still trying to keep possession. A couple times the Tigers come in on the wall to help to try to stop his momentum. Big hit from number 23 on the Clemson Tigers. And they about run for the ref. <laughs> Number 12 for the Gamecocks. Passes back to 23, but they're just getting no mercy over there. 12 finally comes to the Gamecocks. That's a late hit from one of the Clemson defenders on, I believe that's on, uh, he hit Tenji. I think Tangs is going to find his way to the box here because he got caught for retaliating off that. So I would assume he's in the box with two for roughing right now, and Clemson's going to have their first power play of the game. And you, you can hear the, 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 the how the fans do not like that, but it's like my mom always told me, it's always the second person to hit that gets in trouble, <laughs> not the first, so you can't retaliate. <laughs> yeah, I think that's Ben Smith in the box, not Jacob Tang. I don't know, sometimes eight looks like eights look like tens, I guess. To so some people there, Jack? What number's turning into? <laughs> Gamecocks fighting for possession with their, with their skates and eventually recover, but the Clemson, number 25 for the Clemson Tigers, quick to trip them up. He ended up recovering the possession for the Tigers. Passes it back to 11 for the purple. Passes it back to 25. Behind the red line to number 11, excuse me, 12, excuse me, 13 <laughs> for the Tigers. I can't talk about numbers today. Now 11 for the Tigers. Tigers have to hit one anyway, but a good save. Especially finding himself on the ground. We're going to see some challenges from the ref as he's going to stop that from trying to happen. But. Bobby Lombardi looked calm and collected as that puck flew right in his glove. This is a huge opportunity for uh, Clemson. They haven't been, they haven't started the game necessarily on the right foot, but if they can get a goal here, it changes the landscape for the whole game. Breaking for the Tigers, Jacob Zou, coming up to the faceoff, back to the 14, Nick Tuzo for the game cost. Tuzo hits it off the wall, the Tigers are there in the set. The puck finds the stretch legs, off the wall, the game, the Tigers recover, and a second, excuse me, now they recover. Trying to get some going. Getting this power play. Both all the players on the wall are looking for the puck. 13 for the Tigers finally find it behind the red line. Passing off the wall. Number 11. Passes it back to the middle. No one pass. 
Number 16, got the handoff to number 11, which is the 18 on his basket. A lot of handoffs, they're just trying to hit it around. And a a set of pass and trying to defend up the tie, off that player, excuse me. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of drop passes, not handoffs. Uh, handoffs in football there, Jack. It's called a drop pass in hockey. It looked close enough to a handoff. I can call it that. All right. Drop passes? Okay. Yeah. 45 seconds up to the power of the Tigers. But the game time defenders are being very aggressive, making sure that the game time or the Tigers excuse me, don't get anything out of this power play. Fighting alongside the wall. They try to one team just tries to have sole possession, but both teams are fighting for it. Third team the Tigers eventually has it, but the shot is wide left. Great save right there by Bobby Brimbardi. Did he hit the Yeah, he hit it with his uh, shoulder. Wow, that's a, you're not even using one of your appendages, <laughs> you're just using the shoulder. <laughs> Great awareness from Bobby Brimbardi with 16 seconds left in the power play. There's some chance of breaking out among the, I assume, Gamecock fans. Uh, it's it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. Kenji is up for the face off. A little bit of pushy wins game possession for the game top. And it flies along on the red line. Big tank for the long zone. As he tries to stop possession. He's getting on the hands over there, and like I said, he's got a lot of time. Nice block of some of the three from the game top. Drumming his body in the way so that the puck wouldn't go around and then Bobby the Barney was able to just scoop it up <laughs> and end the power play for the Tigers. Drummond really sold himself out right there, and it worked out for the Gamecocks. And now there'll be another faceoff now, Tiger offensive zone. And the 14 for the Tigers has is going up for the game, for the shot of possession, excuse me. But Gamecocks win possession, and they hit it off the wall all the way to the other side of the action. That's just Left, recovered by the Tigers, but a big hit to stop the Tigers. A uh, big hit from number three, I believe. And that was a blocked shot from one of our own. It came off the ski. The ski, excuse me. Drummond has the possession of the game. Cox back in the defensive zone. Passes it to the other side of the ice to Tenji. Tenji gets up a minute. But this pass is a bit too far out between one of the game. Cox and that's Ian Schneider, who is able to regain possession behind the goal. He's fighting with one of the Number 10 for the Tigers is in possession. John passes it out to number 30, Jim Martone. The pass is intercepted by the Tigers. And again, a bit of a blitz in case for the Tigers. Passes off the water to Stretch, but the Stretch he wasn't ready for the pass. Trying to get some cover. A lot of back and forth between these two teams right now. No, no team getting so momentum. Big hit on the wall from number 17 for the Gamecocks. But the Tigers are able to recover from 25 going down the ice. There's three Gamecocks around him, so hopefully you can't get anything off of that. 70 for the Gamecocks, intercepts the pass, that's Hatton. The pass is back to 22 behind the red line. 22 spins out of the way, out of that game, that's a Tiger hit. Loses the action, and they're passing the box to number 6 for the Gamecocks. 11 is a nice poke check. Pump in the air, 22 has it now. The safety coming in to fight. 25 has it for the Tigers. And the poke check from the Gamecocks. Another poke check from the Gamecocks. <laughs> Sometimes finds himself, finds himself on the ground. The Gamecocks are not letting Clemson have any duration in their zone right now, and that's exactly what you want to see. Six for the Gamecocks tries to catch it. Looks like Odell on the ice, but uh, <laughs> wasn't able to get it, get his fingers around it. 11 for the Tigers has it. Bit of a misdirection. Nice pass. Wide right. Again, a pass from number 12 from behind the red line, but he hits off the knee of Bobby Lombardi. Pass it going airborne, a little bit over the head of 21 for the Tigers, who recovers it in his defense in the defensive zone for the Tigers. Passes it to number 18, tries to send the pass to 13, one timer. On their break. Smith misses it, hits it a bit wide left, I think goes off the knee of the goalie. And the Gamecocks have lost possession behind the red line as the Tigers recover. Tigers going down the ice, for eight, a two on one for the Tigers. For a nice block from Gamecock defender. Here's that was Jeffrey, Jeffrey Kaprowski that went to his legs. Excuse me, it wasn't the seventh. Gray Curry goes down to his legs to stop that pass from being centered. Gamecocks now have possession. Close to the top of the time. 
a, I, I think that's going to be a slash on Clemson right there. I didn't catch the number, but that's definitely a slash. So the, the Gamecocks will be heading to their second power play of the day. They're all for one of power plays as, as of now. That would be on number 23 for the Tigers, and that is Green. First name. You can call him B, but uh, it looks like Green, as he will be in the box for two minutes. Yeah, two minutes with what? I was going to say they didn't have anything on. It was slashing for Thompson Tigers. So with three minutes and 50 seconds left in the first period, there's two minutes. There's two minutes half left for the game, guys. Ref is talking to the fans, getting them to back up. He's not liking the amount of energy from our fans, from the fans today. They were, and the fans they were banging don't like on, that. <laughs> they were banging on the glass, and now uh, the fans are definitely going at the refs right now. Excuse me, not a center pass, but a shot. It goes right into the crouch position of the goalie. It's number one for the Tigers. I haven't said his name yet, but his, na uh, his name is Liam McHugh. Liam McHugh. He's been solid tonight, as always. Um, right there, though, you saw a nice breakout pass from Alex Kranis, and that really jump-started the opportunity. That's what the Gamecocks are going to have to keep on doing as they enter the zone. Another fa uh, defensive face off the Gamecocks is Jefferson Kranis. Kranis position. He kicks it with his skate. Out to uh, Kranis, who his new shot goes wide right. And there's another shot at the time from the ref. I'm not sure entirely why. The, the penalty was on number, thir number 13, not 23. Oh, excuse me. That's my fault. Uh, that would be on Jacob Rue, not uh, whoever I said it was. B Green. <laughs> Game Cox, trying to the position on the base off the A minute 26 left for the power play. Clear from the game to up from the Tigers, but not a not a nice game. Game talks are coming behind their own red line. Trying to get something going as the power play is running out. Francis misses the pass, hits it off the wall, going down behind the red line. 15 for the Game Cox. Tries to recover, sitting back on the on, on Brown. Game Cox recovered. Francis passes it out to number 21, I believe. Number 20. Sets it. Francis tries to put the one in there, but to no avail. Right into the body of little animosity right there after the whistle there, Jack. Number 15 for the game cards got a little chippy. That's Sean Davis. Got a little chippy with the goalie. And now refs can have a talking to with him. See what that's on. <laughs> I say that goalie, uh, McHugh, last two games he had 22 saves on 22 shots and 11 saves on 12 shots. So <laughs> he is. He's definitely, that's an over a 900 save percentage right there. That's right, right what you want. That is some fast mash right there, Ben. <laughs> He's stretching on his knee, trying to get possession for the game He ends up getting it, passes it out to number 15. Tries to get one in, but hits right off the knee pad of the goalie, McHugh. Fans do not like what just happened, and I don't really know what just happened. <laughs> I missed it. But uh, the number, because Stretchy's on the ground, his helmet's off. There's a lot of boos and screams coming from both. <laughs> Our both wonderful things. statistician actually wrote the number uh, for uh, McHugh's uh, save percentage so far. It's a whopping 943. That is phenomenal. I think we should focus on what's going on right now, trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> a little bit of, again, some rough housing after the stop of the time. Trebsky finds himself with his helmet off and is now on the bench. So, Luckily not in the box, though. That's true, but I don't know what happened, so hopefully he's not injured. Or, but the, whatever happened, the fans did not like it, and that's a bit of a lack, a lack of. Uh, it's a five on three action right now for 41 seconds. We have three, two players in the box. Three, 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 no. Well, excuse. For some reason, they have four players on the on the ice right now. If it was a penalty, it would be on Schreiber, but the refs are having a talk with Clemson, and now the refs are going to explain what's going on to Coach Sirwall down on the bench. A bit of a lack of attention on our part. I don't know what happened, but obviously, Gamecock fans aren't happy, and 
Even our wonderful eyes in the sky up here have no idea what happened. There was no penalty, so offensive face off to the Gamecocks. Try to win possession with 38 seconds up to the power play. Find the red line, it's passed back to number 15, but he could not get the pass, could not complete the pass. Cox passes out to 21, going down to the offensive zone. Trying to get something going for the game. Cox as he goes behind the red line. Pass the goal, tries to slip into the back door. Right up the knee of the goal of McHugh. I'll tell you one thing, I'm loving the way Tangy gets the passes to start the break. He's been putting them right on the stick of the game, Cox, and that's exactly what you want to see from passes in that scenario. Exactly. I think, is that Kostrex coming back in or someone else with really long hair? Someone else with really long hair. That's uh, Ray Curry. Sorry, y'all look similar from up here. Gamecox win the face off. Passes it out to Curry. Curry with a fake shot pass. Back to the left. Tries to stop it in there. So close. Got it connected to the man to the Gamecock. Offensive player that was right by the net, but got blocked by the goalie. I'll tell you one thing right there, Jack. That setup was beautiful. They tried a back a slap pass to distract and then a back door. Laid out by number 17 to the Tigers, which we've been shaking up on that. He did a full 360, and the ref did not say anything about it, so the Panthers are not having that. Tenji able to regain possession for the Gamecocks. Martone going in the middle. A little bit of a fake shot, but from the poke check, when he comes to the defender, stops the momentum. Martone regains possession behind the red line, passes it out to Curry, I believe. Excuse me. Nope, now Curry has it. And a huge hit, there's a late hit, I would think, for number 25, as Curry gets hit right after he passes it. Gamecocks recover possession behind the red line. Gonna slip one in the back door, at least they're gonna try to. Or pass it back out to number 24. Passes it off the wall behind the red line. The Tigers are able to recover, but Tenji's still fighting for it as he's able to get it. Tenji's still trying to keep this alive for the Gamecocks. Like I said, like you said, he's had, he, he can see the fire in his eyes. <laughs> he yeah. came to play as he always does. <laughs> Gamecocks trying to keep possession. Number 12 for the Gamecocks. Finally keeps it. 12 has it inside. Nice, trying to get something going, trying to get something going. Poke check save from McHugh stops the momentum there. A poke check that saves a backdoor pass that would have left the net wide open. That was a great A opportunity for the Gamecocks, but a better save from McHugh. Number 12 for the Gamecocks. Jack Watson had a great opportunity there with that backdoor pass, but goalie just had the sensibility to get his stick out there and make sure. I mean, I don't know if you call that a poke check. You call that a save. <laughs> he but, used uh, the stick. That's, that's for sure. Either or. Another offensive face-off for the Gamecocks. Ben Smith up, trying to win possession for the Gamecocks. There's no ref. <laughs> ben Smith was ready, the ref wasn't. Ben Smith was ready, he was, he was ready. There's 30, 35 seconds left in the period. As the Gamecocks are gonna try to squeeze something in here, as they've had the possession on the side, their side of the ice for the majority of this period. Gamecocks got something that's number 18. A little bit, of, he tried to get something saucy there, but ended up losing possession. Tigers far down the ice, 12 touches flat one, but it goes wide left. He was blocked, and recovered by the Tigers. Blocked by Mavardi with 10 seconds left. Cam Cox up on their side of the ice. Nice pass, Jeffrey Kostrex came back to the bottom of 18, but 18 just barely misses it. Even though it's Jeffrey Kostrex coming in the 10th because of Ben Smith. And that will be the end of the period for the Gamecocks. Personally, I've liked what I've seen from the Gamecocks. They've seen you see a lot more fire in their eyes, whether that's a new squad or a little bit of animosity against this team or bad taste in their mouth from last week, but whatever it is, there's some fire in the Gamecocks today. Without a doubt there, Jack, the Gamecocks have looked phenomenal so far. Their defensive intensity has been very good, and their offensive amount of time they've had in the offensive zone has been great. Well, when we come back, we'll get some... We'll talk about some on on ice analysis from our sideline reporters that they'll give us, and then Ben and I will talk about what we think the keys are for both the Gamecocks and the Tigers going into the second period. We'll be right back.
And we're back with this period break analysis, I guess. <laughs> that was, that, is that what you could call it? To recap what happened and discuss what should happen moving forward. There we go. Um, what you what did you get from our sideline reporters down on the ice, Kayla Pace and uh, Jordan Beener? <laughs> Excuse new, us. New, Sorry new for cast that. Members, new cast members. We got to learn the names. Definitely. But um, the simple fact of the matter is that the Gamecocks outshot Clemson by us uh, by nine by a total of nine to four, and you saw it. The Gamecocks dominated uh, possession time. They dominated every category of offense in, in that period. They have to keep this going, though. Exactly. I, like I said before, there's just a certain kind of fire out there. You can see it. They're on all cylinders, but still keeping their cool. Yeah. Other than, I think, maybe one penalty, mm -hmm. which was, I don't even, I think it was a... Interference call, interference. I think. So it wasn't even, lo it wasn't even losing their heads, you know. They just, I mean, just got in the way a little bit, I guess. Um, there was, there was, it was pretty scrappy. Yep. Um, there was, the fans you could hear wanted some calls to be made, <laughs> but they weren't, but... um. Lots of big hits on the ice. Oh, yeah. Number 25 for the Tigers. <laughs> I saw him laying out a bunch of players. Mm -hmm. He seemed to be flying around, and I... Uh, my the most impressive thing to me right now is Tenji. Yeah, he has been everywhere on the ice tonight. Going mm -hmm. wherever the puck is, he is there on offense or defense. He's been on it, like you said. He's been everywhere. He's been making great passes. He's been hustling back to get on defense, and he's been making plays of the game. You can see why he's the leader on the ice. Exactly, because he had he had another assist tonight on that goal off of uh, I believe it was or no no excuse me. It was Sean Davis goal. who had the assist, and then was it him or was it no it was Boris who had the goal it was I think. Excuse me. I had, they're all six and eight and nine. <laughs> they're all the same numbers. Um, but, uh, no, I definitely think that the Gamecocks, at least both on offense and defense, have just outplayed the Tigers so yep. far. They uh, have tilted the ice the whole period, keeping it on the Clemson's defensive zone. The, yeah, the only negative for the Gamecocks is that it's only one nothing. Because if I'm Clemson in the locker room right now, I'm saying, well, we didn't play too well in the first, but we're only down one. Exactly. A lot of miscommunication, mm -hmm. a couple missed passes, and a lot of missed opportunities. Yeah. But, I mean, to be fair, that Clemson goalie, uh, uh, um, Liam McHugh. Yes, thank you, Liam McHugh. He is he is not someone to be to be messed with. I mean, no. he is he has played his fair share tonight. Yeah, he's definitely been great, making a lot of good saves. We that one stick save he's w saved what would have been an empty net opportunity for the Gamecocks. Um, also, their offense has been good. They've just been a little off, like you said. So I mean, they need us help that with uh, Rapico and. Uh, I can't remember his name, but there are two guys that are their leading scorers right now. Yeah. That's, I don't know. <laughs> it's the same thing. There's a lot of weird names on the Clemson roster if you look at it. There's, there's a lot of them. Um, but I do think, yeah, another negative thing for the Gamecocks is they've had two power plays, mm -hmm. and most of the time in those power plays, they had possession. Yeah. But still were not able to do anything. Yeah. So, you gotta have some. You gotta get something going when you have those opportunities. You can't let that go. Just like last week, the Gamecocks haven't been able to really capitalize on the power play. Hopefully, this is something they can work on moving forward, and hopefully, they'll capitalize later in this game because there's bound to be more penalties for both teams. Oh, exactly. Yes, <laughs> especially in a game like this. The refs had to talk to both team, both sidelines a couple times. Mm -hmm. Even had to talk to the to the <laughs> fans because they were too up on the on they the. They were glass. too punching up on the glass, and they the ref went up there and pointed at them and said, "You better stop." <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, the fans, that just made them want to do it more. It did. So we apologize for anything that uh, comes on that's been mentioned by the fans. We, we can't control them, but we can control ourselves. I think it's more of a compliment to our mics if they pick <laughs> it up. Yep. But uh, that's all for us up here in the studi er, studio, excuse <laughs> me, the press box, I yep. guess. Um, and when we come back, it'll be the start of the second period for the Gamecocks against the Clemson Tigers.
second period, just moments from being underway here at the Flex Center in Irmo, South Carolina. Like I said, the game, like we said before, the Gamecocks got a strong start in the first period. What do you think is the best? How do you think they're going to go about trying to stay up with that momentum? I think they're, I think they're definitely moving forward. They're definitely going to have to start the exact same way they finish. Uh, don't let the intensity down. Have great breakout passes and get more opportunities on net because eventually McHugh's gonna slip up or that's the train of thought is that McHugh's gonna slip up or the Gamecocks are gonna find an open, an opening for a goal. I think we're gonna pick up even more of the fans audio <laughs> here because they move to the other side so they can hang from a Clemson goalie. Oh yeah, you, that's a Gamecock must. Exactly, but now they're closer to us. <laughs> Puck drop, about to go the other way for the second period. Changes up. <laughs> Big rebound right there, though. Well, number 17 was definitely upset with himself right there after exactly. nearly turning the puck over. The Gamecocks have definitely been working the cycle and winning the battles on the board so far in this one. They have not made it easy for the Clemson Tigers to keep possession through. Flying down the ice for the Tigers. One-on-one -on -one matchup. He just tries to hit it away there. Hitting it behind the wide right of the goal. It was behind the goal line. Gamecocks recover. Hit it all the way on the other side of the ice, but it was not icing. Gamecocks are able to recover. Kranis has it for the Gamecocks. Ooh, and nice spin move from Kranis. Krennis deked the defender into submission right there. He might be small, but he is elusive. <laughs> you gotta be. Gamecock's got a send of the pass in. No avail. Intercepted by Tiger defender. Krennis fighting for it. With one time out to number, I can't see what number that was. It was either six or eight. Oh, nine. nine. Wow. wow. Most times, but it was wide enough either way. Behind the goal line. Tigers recover. Flying down the ice. Nice uh -oh. pass from 25. Flying down the ice is the game. Fans wanted a late hit right there. It would have been a roughing penalty. Tigers have it going down the ice, bit of a two and two. He hits it off the wall, just trying to get them behind the goal line. Tigers recover that's number 11, but a big hit from number 24 for the Gamecocks. As he goes behind, hits off the back post of the goal. Flying down the ice, 25 for the Tigers has it. Hit, passes it to the knee of the Gamecock defender, who was able to recover the pass for the Gamecocks. A big hit, a big reception. Ooh. 28 for the Tigers as he lays out with the 12 jack. Oh! 18 finds himself on the ground. That's Ian Powder Wow, I hope the What, <laughs> what um, a move there, though, to get that good chance. The only thing that missed was putting it in the back of the net because that was a beautiful deke. Beautiful what? Deke. It's uh, like, you know, uh, in hockey, a deke is like when you go side to side real quick. Okay. That's a lot of words, I'm sorry. Certainly a mouthful right oh, there yeah. for you, Jack. Stop at the time by the ref. I believe that'll be a... I'm not sure he's talking to the ref. He's talking to the 12, the captain for the Tigers. I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Did they call a penalty? I think. I don't know, it looks like he might be going towards the... No? The ref is just waiting for the line to there. 
now to be a face off in the game in the game top defensive zone. Tied his go. Try to get something going here. Loose the face off. Game cocks in possession. Hit it off the wall. Tigers recover. In the middle. Puck in the air. Game cocks trying to fight for it as he goes off the right wall. Again, pass off the wall with a poke check from Kostrevsky. And that was just like a pull down from number 27, and I think we're going to get some sort of penalty yeah, for that. Def it's definitely going to be a hook right there from number 27 as the Gamecock player went straight to the ground. You can see him pulled by the back of the neck. Mm -hmm. He used the stick right there, and that's how you're going to get caught with uh, that penalty. That's 27 for the Tigers. That is Butterfield, mm -hmm. and that'll be a two-minute power play for the Gamecocks. Yeah, that's good because Butterfield's one of their best defenders. for the. So it's a, good, it's a great opportunity for the Gamecocks to finally get that first power play goal. Let's see if they can do it, Jack. They're 0-2 on the night, but let's see if Tenji can spark something to get it going. Face-off wasn't really won by anybody, <laughs> but uh, they're still fighting for possession on the corner of the wall. I guess it's a turn. It's kind of a little bit of a stake, so it's pretty good. Turns up to the top, passes it over to 7-2. Oh! Another phenomenal chance right there for the Gamecocks. Lombardi flings it in the air, almost hits the ref. Oh, 17 leaves himself right through two front the defenders. Tries to set up a pass in, a little too far. Hits off the wall to Martone. Martone trying to get something going behind the goal line. Keeps possession. And tries to get a back with shot in. I don't know. Hits him right in the mask right there. That was a good shot. The Gamecocks are looking strong on this power play so far. They just haven't found the back of the net. They've had the Clemson defense stagnant, and that's what you want. A minute 08 left in the power play, 15.42 left in the period. And uh, this chance for the Gamecocks is dangling right in front of them, just mm -hmm. like the mask is dang dangling <laughs> off of uh, McHugh. Uh, McHugh. Yeah. And the puck hit him right in the face. <laughs> Definitely probably woke him up a bit, though. Smith up for the, uh, he up the face off. Wins the face off, but there's no one there to recover it. How did that, how did go that? Into goal? Yeah, exactly, Jack. I have no idea how the Gamecocks didn't find one more stick to get in the net. Goes all out to save that puck from going in. I think there's about four shots within that one two second period. McHugh has <laughs> McHugh has been phenomenal tonight. Definitely been fun to watch. He's never been out of position so far. Watson up for the Gamecocks on face off. Wins it for the Gamecocks, passes it behind his body, tries to center, but there's no one there. Smith passes it out for number 24 for the Gamecocks. Passes it back to Smith. Smith tries to center. Nice shot. Oh, wide left. What the a what a setup again. They just didn't get the saucer pass and get a stick on it for the tip in. say that he knocked the net off right before that went in. The Gamecock fans surely are not going to be happy with that one. I can imagine they can hear it. <laughs> you can even feel it, the amount of people hitting the ice. A beautiful opportunity with a great setup mm -hmm. off the rebound. Yeah, exactly. It was great a first shot from the Gamecock. I don't remember who it was entirely, but after hitting it right off for the save from uh, McGee, it's a great opportunity for that rebound. I'll tell you one thing, the Gamecock players are going to need to regroup because some of these guys are very, it, you can see that they're very upset that they didn't get that goal to count. I think they needed any reason to be upset already. <laughs> Smith liking the, the intensity from the fans, you can see it. Right now, right now uh, Liam McHugh is getting a talking to from the official to try and tell him not to do that again. To, do, to, do again. to kick the net off right before. And we apologize if you're picking up the uh, Gamecocks chant right now. The fans of the Gamecocks chant. Gamecocks win the best face off. Hit by the, uh, saved by the goalie. 24 for the Gamecocks. Misses that pass. That's Dave Cox. He just, he just misses it. That's the Kimby over here. <laughs> oh, Lord. The amount of fans here. We're hearing some, some interesting things. Uh, he has it. One on two. 24 for the Tigers. Lays his body on the line. Don't make that. Interception from 17. That was a 
That was a terrible pass right there from 18. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I think that's Powderly. I don't know what he was thinking. You're correct, Ben. That is Ian Powderly. Uh-oh. The interception from the Clemson Tigers. Poke check from 20 from Cochran, but not enough to stop possession. Now it is. The Tigers recover it behind the goal line. They're Gamecocks are trying to get off. This is the location. Gamecocks going down the ice, trying to get something going. But the man in the middle, toss it back. He took him. Gamecocks, a three-on-one, yep. backdoor pass, uh, pass from Kostrevsky as he spins around to get it to the left side. I can't, can't, no words explain that. The goalie's literally standing on his head and right now keeping Clemson in the ballgame. Liam McHugh, got to tip your hat off if you're the Gamecocks to that one. I mean, I'm sure the Gamecocks are getting quite agitated as they can't get that second goal. Kostrevsky goes up for the face-off. I mean, that was about three, even, there were three different people that could have scored that goal, and I think he saved all of them. Kostrevsky wins the face off, but there's no one on the right side of the ice to recover. Too far past for the game, to, uh, the Tigers, excuse me. And the Tigers recover. Behind the goal line. 17 for the game, Cox with a poke check and a body slam trying to get it going. Excuse me. Game Cox have it. Game Cox have it. Trying to get something going. Taking down the ice, hitting the butt, it looks like a little defender. Who has it going to the offensive zone? Pass goes off the body of the Gamecocks defender. Now behind the goal line with 22 is trying to recover from the Gamecocks. That's not a run from Hinton. Puck flies near top of the blue one for the Tigers. I am shocked they did not call a tripping penalty right there. I'll tell you one thing right now, though, Jack. The Gamecocks have been looking. <laughs> the Gamecocks have been looking great so far in this one. They just haven't been able to find the back of the net. Liam McHugh is keeping the Tigers in this one. You can see the impact he has on this Clemson defense, and it shows why they've only given up two goals in the past two games. <laughs> Face off in the Gamecock defensive zone. One to five Tigers. Shot going in, but it was hit off the leg of the, of the Gamecock defender. I think it was Kostrzewski. Huge hit from number 14 to the Tigers. Absolutely body slams him into the wall. And I'm not sure if he's gotten up yet. I think he's getting, he's pretty slow to get up right now. He got absolutely slammed. That's what the GDQ Duncan hit the Gamecocks. Number 14 to the Tigers. Someone, I think someone's heading to the box for a boarding right now. I, I could be out, wrong. They're bringing out the paramedics. That's what you hate. You do not want to see that. But no, Duncan Hickman got up on the board. <laughs> Seems okay for now. Gets a, gets a cheer right there from the Gamecock crowds. Definitely 14. not feeling all right, though. Matt Powers, you can see the power in that hit. I hope it's <laughs> not a terrible pun. But Powers is going to the box for that hit. I think it would be a wash. -out. Hickman's still struggling, though. He is in a lot of pain as he goes back down right before the Gamecocks bench. He's going to be a hit from behind. And now Hickman is back on the ground. Paramedics coming back down. Paramedics coming back out to check it in. The, the medic there, Jack, or the trainer, it's, he's not a paramedic. He's not the guy from the ambulance. Either or, Benjamin. All right, I'm just saying. But this is exactly what you don't want to see if you're the Gamecocks right now. Duncan Hickman has been phenomenal in this game, and he is a leader on the ice. Huge defensive presence for the Gamecocks. So this penalty is going to be a five-minute uh, major, and I think he's out for the game. Wow. It's Definitely not the hit you want. So the Gamecocks will be on the power play for five minutes. Oh. As you see. Yeah. The Tigers. I'm having a talking to with some of the fans as this player comes out. I'm hoping that he's in there. And, yeah, and number Matt Power. Oh, okay. And Matt Power is done for the night. <laughs> Five minute power play for the for the game cocks. <laughs> yeah, I I really do apologize uh, to our audience if they are. But it's hockey, I mean we understand that this happens. 
Now, just getting back to it though, Jack, the Gamecocks have to capitalize here. They absolutely have to. Open three, you cannot go these five minutes without and a goal. And on a five minute, if it's a major, that means they got five minutes no matter what. So they can score as many goals as possible. So it's got to be time for the Gamecocks find the back of the net. Look after the face-off, Martoni goes in, wins, but the Gamecocks passes back to 17. Chopper gets him going, but gets off the stick and flies in the air. Had to be a stop at the time. Let's see how many times we'll see Liam McHugh stand on his head in this one, though. I mean, he looked like he was playing twisted down there <laughs> on the ice. I know, I definitely couldn't do what he did. I can't even stand up on skates. Well, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Gamecocks win possession in the face-off again. Kranis passes it back. In the middle of the ice. Oh. The lost possession. That's on the run. Tigers are on the ice. It's a one-on-one. He did everything but put the buck, puck in the back of the net, and that's what you got to do if you're Clemson. Unnecessary shot from Krannis there. <laughs> hey, Krannis just wanted to get a shot on net right there. What was unnecessary, though, was maybe McHugh holding on to that one for the whistle because now there's a whistle in the offensive zone. But another thing that the Gamecocks have done very well tonight is win faceoffs. I don't have the exact number right now, but hopefully our uh, sideline reporters can get that, for, get that for us. But they've definitely won, like, three out of... They've definitely won like 75% of the faceoffs, and that's helping. Especially with the faceoff, just like you were talking about. Unfortunately, when they do win, they rarely keep possession. And that's the big issue of this, of this, for this team so far. Last week had saved from the goalie. Passes back. He still can keep the possession on the offensive side. Nice center pass on the middle. Six slips up a bit. Jess went off a of Boris stick right there. Turnover. Boris trying to get something going. He just to get it behind the goal line. Trying to get something into the crease. Nice pass to the top of 15. And he just misses. And he just loses possession real quick. Going all the way back to Lombardi. Comes out of the net a bit. Gets it out of there. Gets it leaked from the ref. <laughs> gets it a little too far out of there, though, as Thompson gets it right back down the ice. And the puck, it's, I mean, the puck, it looks like a game of air hockey. The amount of times it's going back up and down the ice. <laughs> no one seems to be able to hold on to it. Or hold on to it. Like yeah. Good keeping right there. Excuse me? Good keeping right there by number 20. For them or us? For us. Okay, Gretzky, yeah. He was able to keep possession for us. Barty coming out of it again. Game Cox had possession on their own side of the ice. Where did he come from? He's all over there, Ben Smith. A great stretch pass, but no one's there. No one in the center of the ice. Try to get something going. Seven comes back down, that's Curry. And trying to keep possession for the Gamecocks. And just like that, two minutes already wasted on this power play. The Gamecocks have to bump up the intensity right here and get more time in their zone. They've been too sloppy right now, and if this doesn't change, they could turn the whole momentum of the game. Yeah, and the stick right there. Beautiful setup right there. Great pass. That is Ian Snyder for the Gamecocks. And that is just what we were talking about, that explosive nature from the Gamecocks and not wasting his power. I'll point. tell you what I saw out there was the fact that the Gamecocks had three straight good passes and there wasn't any uh, confusion or any uh, missed opportunities. And now the Gamecock fans are secretly chanting the name of the Clemson goalie. And the assists were Tangy and... Excuse me, Martone, sorry, as I can't read my phone. <laughs> the assists were from Tangs and Martone. Tangy and Martone with the, assist, with the assists, goal credited to Ian Schneider. That'll be Ian Schneider's second goal, or no, excuse me, first goal of the year. He had, he had one assist last game. Yeah. Two points on the year. And the Gamecocks take a 2-0 lead with 10-20 left to go, and two minutes, remain, two minutes and nine seconds remaining on the power play.
the, the fans are certainly get, <laughs> those fans are certainly trying to do their best to get into the inside the head um, of Liam McHugh, but he, it has not worked. That goal was not on him. It was more on the fact that it was a great chance with a lot of open net just because of the passing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Kostremski uh, accidentally blocked what would have been a goal right there. But the Gamecocks, again, keeping the puck in their zone, keeping composure and getting great A opportunities. That's exactly what you want to see right there. No doubt about that. Smith up for the faceoff. Wins possession of the Gamecocks. Brings it back, but there's no one there to recover. Now the Gamecocks have it on their own side of the ice. Passes to 15. Trying to pass it over to 12 for the Gamecocks. That's Jack Watson. Watson passes it out to, I can't tell, I think it's Smith, but I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> He tries to keep possession, but he slammed in the wall. She knows he's watching that with Sean Davis. Who was not able to recover the puck for the game box behind the goal line. Chris pass in, the, in, in between a couple defenders, but doesn't do enough. Game box lose possession. <laughs> and now Bobby Lombardi coming out behind the goal line to get the puck out there. Keeping things going for the game box. Four. Try to get something going again. 46 seconds left in there, five-minute power play. Trying to really put a mark on this game. They can get another goal. They have to give them some more breathing room in this, in this game. Uh, Center pass from Sean Davis, but no one there to receive it. The Gamecocks, again, give up another opportunity. Pass at the top of the ice, pass at the best of 23, pass at the top of the ice, brought up the state of number 18 for the Gamecocks. Behind the goal line now, both players didn't realize they didn't have possession. Do a backdoor shot. To no avail. 12 has it for the Gamecocks. Trying to keep them going. 13 seconds left in the power play. Center pass again. No one there to receive it. Tigers are clear. And uh, another stat from our uh, sideline reporters down uh, who are inside the glass. They said the Gamecocks are out shooting uh, Clemson in this period 11 to 1. Now you win games right there, man. And that's the end of the power play for the Gamecocks. They're, in, they're one for three, four? One for four. One for four on the night. night. Eight minutes left in the, in the second period. And like I said, the Gamecocks have been able to keep possession on the offensive side of the ice. Yeah, the fans are <laughs> the fans are cheering on Bobby Lombardi right now, but I, Bobby hasn't had to do that much this period. He's just had to, I mean, that's that's tough, though, as your goalie. If you don't see any action, you got to stay awake for when you do eventually will. Martona for the face-off, wins for the Gamecocks behind in between his legs. Curry trying to keep it going. Pass it out to anyone who flings on the air. Wide, wide over. And that. Benji getting a little bit of a skirmish, I guess, with one of the Clemson players. And fans looking for a call, but no call. There will be no call back to be found. Uh oh. Tigers flying down the ice on the left side of the, of the Gamecock defensive zone. Good center pass from the Tigers, but too many Gamecock defenders in the way. Ball behind the goal line to the right side of the ice in the corner. Gamecocks and Tigers fighting for it both. Can't see who's recovered it yet. They're still fighting for it over there. And now it's going behind the goal line. And again, they're still fighting for it. No one can seem to retain possession for more than two seconds. <laughs> Flies behind the net. Gamecocks will recover. Big hit from number 20-something for the Tigers. Excuse me. Tigers recover possession. Try to get something going here from both sides. Gamecocks recover. Got a bit of a three-on-two. Nice pass to the wall. Oh, the defender's on the ground. Got to be a stop at the time. I think they're calling it. I think they're calling it offsides right there, just barely. But uh, the trip and uh, caused the trip and the contact caused. Uh, I think that was Tang's to get offside. He was saying Tang got a little bit forward because he fell down. And that's, yeah. Yikes. Maybe the Clemson defender knew that and fell down on purpose. <laughs> or at least that's what he's telling the guys uh, when he gets back to the bench. True. <laughs> well, that's what the, the, the Carolina fans are going to complain about. <laughs> Chris Drebsky going for the face off. Loses it, but the Gamecocks recover. Sean Davis trying to get them going. 
Sean Davis accidentally knocks the on the ground. The puck was an accident for real. I'll tell you Sean one thing. Davis wasn't paying attention there. The puck went right by him. That, he couldn't touch it. That would have been offsides right there. Didn't know that. Never mind. <laughs> Tigers recovered. Going down center ice. Both check from Kostrevsky. Stop the momentum and quickness of this. There we go, Almost a shot there. But a little bit of miscommunication from both teams. <laughs> and now the uh, Gamecocks, now there'll be a stop at the time as Bobby Lombardi saves it on the ground. I think that, yeah, that's the first time Bobby Lombardi has seen the, seen any action in the past couple minutes. But uh, Gamecocks will, or will have a bit of a lineup change as they try to keep this momentum going for the next six and a half minutes or so. <laughs> Definitely. The Gamecocks are looking strong, but that was the longest that Clemson has been in the offensive zone right there. And they still didn't even have possession for most of it. <laughs> Gamecocks quickly win the faceoff and win possession as they try to keep things going. Ben Smith flying down the ice. He's got 18 beside him. Trying to get something in the middle as he goes behind the goal line. Tries to get one in the back door right off the left post or maybe off the defender or the goalie. I couldn't really tell. Great keeping right there. Gamecocks keep possession. Big hit from number 23 as he gets the momentum stopped for the Gamecocks. Gets that offensive play done. Big hit again from 22. There's a lot of big hits all around. 18 for the Gamecocks has it, tries to pass it in. Nice center pass, and that's a goal from the Gamecocks. 3 nothing for the Gamecocks with six minutes left in the period. Another beautifully set up goal right there. And there was nothing that McHugh could have done off that backdoor pass onto the other side of the net, and there's just a wide open net for the Gamecocks. And I'm pretty sure McHugh got a piece of that too. And we're going to see... That will be the 14th shot for USC to Clemson's three. We're going to see in a couple seconds who that goal came from. Is that outside? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You can tell by my eyes in the skies that was Ben Smith that had the, that the score. I want you to know on who he was assisted by. He put the game pops up 3 0. Tricky from number 17 for the Clemson Tigers. You can see this deficit getting to the team. Kostrevsky on the ground again as he was earlier. The refs have to do something to maintain control of this game. Exactly. Or it's just going to be an all-out, you know, Wild West brawl from both teams. Mm -hmm. Seven and twelve assisted Ben Smith on the goal right on the there. Goal, that is Gray, Grayson Curry and Jack Watson, each credited with the assist. That was a beautiful setup, I do have to say. Tigers Unbelievable. Tigers the face-off, but the Gamecocks regain possession. Excuse me, back in action, and You're good. hey, it's getting interesting. <laughs> Ooh, just stretch you wide open. He's got someone to the right. Nice pass. It's a bit too far for 22. And a big hit on the wall. He's able to lead into this with a good pass. No one there to receive it. I'm loving what I'm seeing from the Gamecocks Three offense. Three on two for the Tigers. Tries to get a shot going just right into the glove of Bobby Lombardi. 5.35 left in the game. In the, excuse me, the game. <laughs> I wish it was 5.35 <laughs> left in the game. That's not biased, right? No. But, uh, Five the period as the Gamecocks have defensive face-off. Kostrepsi again, he's been able to the face-off the past five or six times, I think. He's won almost all of them, so keep putting him out there. Exactly. He's, I think, one of the best face-off players, in my opinion. Gamecocks win the face-off again. Lose possession for a second, but now they're just fighting for it behind the goal line. The Tigers just trying to get something, anything going as their high-scoring offense has been all but silenced in, these, in this period and a little bit over half a period, I guess. <laughs> Tigers have it. 28 has it behind. The shot in. Wide right and a couple hits. And now there's some, some shots flying from the Clemson defenders. All right, Clemson offensive players, excuse me. I'll tell Bobby Lombardi just, you know, able to. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Bobby Lombardi was able to see that puck through three screens right there. That was a great save. It, it's an underrated save, but it was definitely a great save from Lombardi. Another couple, another lineup change for both teams. Now we're going to see. What the Tigers are going to try to do is they have another offensive face-off to, to try to get anything going. I will tell you, I feel really bad for Liam, their goal, the Clemson Tigers goalie. He is just getting absolutely heckled out here. I mean, that's what hockey fans do to the opposing true. netminder. When you're that close, you're able to do it. Gamecocks have possession on their side. There's a lot of hits and bodies flying around for both teams. As you can see, the animosity brewing <laughs> as this deficit grows larger. Poke check for number three for the for, uh, Drummond. He's able to get the Oh. A huge hit for number 13 on the ice. And a punch from number 13 on the ice. It's a melee. Anything they can, the fans are loving it. The ice. That's Drummond for the Gamecock. 
<laughs> that's 27 for the Tigers. That's 13 for the, ti for the Tigers. And that's number 13. That is Martone, who was in the box all last game. <laughs> Drummond just got back. I would, I would assume you're going to see at least uh, number 13 for them out of the game. And number the Tigers threw the first punch, 20, but the Gamecocks are being punished. And I think 23 is going to leave the game. Yep, that's what it looks like. That is Brian Orr leaving the game, but the Clemson Tigers threw the first punch. That is insane. 13 for the Tigers going to the box. That is Jacob Rue. And it's just an all-out pandemonium at the flex. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how they sort this out penalty-wise because there was a misconduct right there. And number 23 for the Gamecocks, so like you said, is out. Would that be five, is that five minutes? It's no? gonna, it's a ten, he's probably got a game misconduct, which technically is 10 minutes, but he'll be out the rest of the game. Okay. Then five-minute power play for the, for, the, for the Gamecocks. Excuse me. As there are two Tigers in the box, and Drummond is now going to the box as well. I don't know, I, I don't think this is biased, but it was right in front of us. Mm. We could see clearly the Tigers threw the first punch. They did, I mean, but there that being some, there said, was some, there was some, there's been a lot, this has been leading up to. There was some extracurriculars beforehand, but I think when it comes to who threw the first hit, Mm -hmm. I don't think that Drummond should have came. He was all the way over by the goal. Yeah. He flew all the way down while the refs were still there. He came to protect his teammate, I'll tell you that. I but understand the brother there, but that's something you cannot do or you are going to get sent to the, to the, to the box. Exactly. Um, it's going to take them a while as they're seeing to sort out all these penalties because they're going to hit, I think, the Gamecocks with two and us with two. Martone was involved. Uh, Martone was involved. Drummond was involved. Orr is now has left the game. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting, interesting to see what is going on and it looks like one of the medical officials is even going out to talk i can't imagine he got hurt that bad no he has a bloody nose you can see him holding a paper towel up to his ah. nose in the box so uh someone clocked him pretty good right there hey if you're gonna get a penalty you get your money's worth huh? <laughs> right you're gonna get knocked out probably 440 left in this period an absolute pandemonium at the flex right here definitely uh caught our attention right there came out of nowhere as the Gamecocks were in good position to try and get another opportunity. And then next thing you know, uh, Clemson lost their heads and the Gamecocks went in for it. And the, the fans act, acted like absolute, it was like a wrestling match. <laughs> Someone got thrown to the ground, everyone's going insane. I mean, hockey fans, you gotta love the fights. Exactly, I mean, it's like, you hate to say it, but for most people that watch hockey, it's because of the fights. It's just <laughs> like why most people watch NASCAR, for the crashes. <laughs> you hate to see it, but like, that's why. All right, but that's a little different. I mean, crashes in NASCAR, you think someone's gonna get hurt. I mean, these, you don't think someone's going to get hurt that badly. That's true. So that, that's what I'm saying it makes it better. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying NASCAR is a little bit worse, but, like, you never know. So, yeah, the ref's going to have a talking to the players here because they just got to find some way to keep control of this game, or this third period is going to be an absolute manslaughter. All right, so uh, Jor Jordan Beaner has updated us so far. It's a 23 USC five-minute misconduct, so he's out for the game because it's a major. And then 13 and 27 are in the box for Clemson, but we do not have what the time of their penalties are going to be. Could, uh, I, like I said, uh, I'm, I, I'm still learning the technicalities, but if they're both in the box, instead of leaving the game, wouldn't they both be just two minutes, or can you get more and still you be You can still get more, but it's interesting. So, okay, so there you have two. It's a four. It's a five-minute power play on us and a four-minute for them. So that means Technically that, a one-minute power play. So at the end of this, it's going to be a one-minute power play for is it, um, a, is it a three on three? No, it should be. I would assume it's a four on three for the for the Gamecocks right now. But if it's not, they could be serving those penalties back to back. So that way it's four on four for the next four minutes. Okay. Understandable. So it has been confirmed. A very nicely dressed man in a vest and <laughs> peach colored pants is walking out to the box. I'm not sure what he's what he's doing. Figure that out there, trying, to, but, uh, trying to make sure the guy didn't break his so nose. We were saying, was it Martone that went to the box, or who went to the? Because we know that 23, Brian Orr has left the game. Three, three's in the box. So Drummond, Drummond's, Drummond. Drummond has gone to the box, and Martone, even though he spent the most time in the penalty box last game, he has somehow eluded its presence here tonight. <laughs> Knock on wood, part. there for you Gamecock fans. Exactly. So right now, there's only three players on the ice. For, uh, three on three, a bit of an overtime rule, huh? <laughs> Got some overtime play in regular in regular period in the regular uh, period. You gotta love hockey, right there. It definitely Seems keeps you awake. Nine will be going to the box too for, for the, the game box. That is that is uh, uh that's Bobby Van Dusen going to the box, but I didn't see him. That was around. late. 
Oh, man, maybe they're switching it, maybe. Bobby's going in and uh, Drummond's going out, maybe? Or that's not Drummond. That? No, Bobby just came back out, so I don't know what... That was weird. I don't know what's happening. All right, so it's four... I think it's going to be a four-on-four four for the next four minutes, and then it'll be a one-minute power play for Clemson. And uh, Jordan Beaner and Kayla have stated that all of these guys in the box got a penalty for a rough, That's a lot which more makes sense. That's a bit of an understatement, yeah. I think. I mean, he just openly punched the man in the face. I think he should have a little bit more of a, of a harsh turn. Game Cox have possession. The Q standing strong yet again. We've been saying his name a countless number of times. He's been phenomenal. Another scrum over behind the goal. See what's going to happen on the back. More players on the ground. Tenji going recovering the puck for the game. Cox tries to hit one in. No one there to get it. Intercepted by the Tigers. Number 11 for the Tigers flying on the ice. Puck in the air, but a bit too far for the pass to be connected. Martone got it on the wall. Being almost held, I guess. Martone's flying down. A bit of a two on two trying to get something going. Martone with a swift pass. In. But he just misses the shot. What a great pass opportunity for Martone. And again, more words being heard from both teams. The refs are going to have to do something soon. Oh, but I think the refs may have just kicked someone out. He made the, oh maybe not, but he did make the he made the nudge like you're out of here. <laughs> maybe it was to get away. I do, uh, another thing that our sideline <laughs> our sideline reporters have been very busy. Uh, the last thing is that Drummond also got a 10 minute misconduct for that. Penalty. Really? Yeah. So he won't be back until midway through the first half of the third quarter. Third period. Oh, he's done. He'll be done for the game. Yeah. Gotta be a bit. We're not going to hold us to it. If, if it's wrong, we're going to blame our camera guy. But <laughs> Game Cox still trying to get something going as they have this going forward. Try to capitalize before the power play. I have no idea how that was not offsides. Neither do I. Sure. Sure. Flies in the air off of the stick, over the defender. Defender trying to get the puck back in keep the drive alive. Can you say drive? I don't really know. I'm going to say it anyway. <laughs> Yet again, you've got to love the intensity out there by the Game Cox, really dominating this 4-4 four four play. They have not let up on that goal at all, which you'd love to see from their home fans. Ooh, 21 for the Gamecocks, throws himself in the glass. <laughs> here, all the way up here. The Gamecocks fighting for possession behind the goal line, and they will recover as he comes back as quickly. Quickly get it back to the night at a, about a weak wrister to the right side of the, of the net, and Bobby Lombardi easily scoops it up for the stoppage of time and it'll be a defensive face-off for the Gamecocks. Yeah, definitely. Bobby just decided to take a breather right there. Didn't like the pressure that Clemson started to build up, so that was a good uh, cover-up by Bobby Lombardi. 17 for the Tigers going up for the face-off. Was, I think, Krannis, but now Krannis seems to be leaving, leaving the ice. <laughs> Gamecocks win possession off the face-off. Keep it going. Pass back to number 21, I believe. All the way down the ice, number 12. Grayson Curry with a beautiful keep in right there to maintain that possession and for the Gamecocks to have that opportunity. But since the puck went off, since the puck went out of play, the faceoff will be outside the Gamecock zone. A bit of a momentum change, you could say, but uh, Cranes able to recover, uh, winning the possession of the Gamecocks, off that pass, winning the faceoff. Cranes on all fours right there, decided to get the possession to drive wide. Passes back to the 15, Sean Davis. Sean Davis with a slap shot, right off the corner. There's too many bodies in between. Number 12 for the Gamecocks needed to get out of the way. That was Watson. Watson getting a little, getting a little feisty, I guess you could say. Gamecocks, Gamecocks need to get back. Gamecocks trying to recover. There's a two-on-one situation. A poke check from the Gamecock defender quickly stops that momentum of that play. Gamecocks have it going down the center of the ice, trying to get something going for the Gamecocks. Poke check from number 12 for the Tigers. Huge! Looks like a shot hit. They're going to start getting tipped over there. Jack Watson got almost obliterated. <laughs> but Bobby yet, a a, bit of a yet again, there. Clemson gets an opportunity, but uh, they just can't capitalize. 
just went wide right. Is it okay to say you better lost that shot? <laughs> 12 for the Gamecocks. Oh. Just an unnecessary shot right into the glove. He could have found something better to do there. I mean, there was only two places he could have put that puck. He could have tried and go back short side, or he had to put it right there because that was great positioning by there was LeCue. Coming down on the right, mm -hmm. going to try to pass it over. That's how yeah, they got that their too. third goal. But, uh, I mean, they have a bit of a cushion now, but you don't want to lack yeah. it at all. Got to love how quick they uh, went on the on man rush right there, though. Ben Smith is, ben Smith is waiting for the face off. Right there's, the there's another guy heading to the box here, and I, I don't know what it is, but. Number 18 for the Tigers. That is Vanderleest. Not even sure why, but it's still a four on. Cool. I would assume he's sitting in maybe for the guy who may have broke his nose in there. But I think that player's still in, but yeah, there's three in the box, four on the ice. That's, I, now, I'm not a math major, but... but uh, that doesn't make sense. That doesn't, that doesn't add up. Regardless, Gamecocks win his up face off. Puck on in the air. That's a high stick. That should have been a high stick, but uh, ref, I think the ref's tired of calling things <laughs> at this point. With a minute left in the period. Tigers flying down the ice. Trying to get some going behind the back pass. Poke check for the Gamecock defender. Again, John uh, Ben Smith, excuse me, is able to stop momentum for the play. Going behind the goal line. Ben Smith will recover. Okay, so, someone doesn't have a stick. <laughs> and they're just going to leave it there. Okay, cool. Gamecocks have it going down the center ice. Toddy had a lead pass in the 17, but he lost possession of it. And, and it squeaks in. in. We'll get the goal. That is Jim Houghton. Try to get with the assist from Patton, excuse me. That's a goal for Jim Houghton. Puck off of his stick, kind of just... Low, Nudge, kind found of its low, way in there. Kind of just load its way in there, moseyed on into the net. It was a great opportunity, and McHugh made the initial save. It just squeaked on through. I thought, as they were both flying down the ice, that he was going to miss that lead pass. He had a little bit too far forward. Got and I think the save off of the rebound, he was able to kind of just push Whoop. it in real quick. Definitely, you'll take it for the Gamecocks right there. Are chanting, it's all your fault <laughs> to Liam McHugh. That, that is tough. Is getting, that he's going to hear that in his nightmares tonight. I mean, Lord Almighty. And I mean, to be honest, he may even have 40 saves right now. He's exactly. been incredible. Nine seconds left in the four on four, and then it'll be a minute long power play for the Tigers. It'll be a third on the night as they try to get something going off of it. Fans now. Demanding to put in the backup going. Those are not even coming. <laughs> they don't have that command to make. Tenji wins they're the gonna, save. Uh, excuse me, the face off, but. They're going to redo that. Guess the ref didn't like that face off too much. I always find it funny that the lead ref has those little arm things. Actually, it looks like a kid in the. Excuse me, someone got a penalty right there. I did, I did not catch who it was, but someone's going to the box for the Gamecocks. Not what you want to see. No, it is not, and I can't really tell who it is. Yet. But again, no time was added to the to the board. Tang, so. Jake, Tangy got an interference call right there. Benjamin, if I have to tell you, all, it's Tenji. Tenji, my bad. I, I apologize. Because you've been hearing me say it. So yeah. Did you just think I was saying it wrong? Or? I, I apologize. It's okay. I apologize, Jake. <laughs> you were Jake's in my class last yeah, year. Jake's going to be mad at you. He's going to prank you in Nashville. <laughs> Tiger's trying to get something on the board here as that puck goes right past the crease as they try to get any sort of goal Thank scored. You. Behind the goal line, he to get the poke check, stop the momentum, passes behind the stick, lead pass, but uh, Gamecock's not fast enough to get there as that was Martone, he couldn't get there in time. Number 11 is quick. Right off the stick of Lombardi for the save as the Gamecocks is just going to try to ride up these next nine seconds. As they're going to try to get into the second period again with this four and I can give us it one, and that is the end of the second period. I think. Excuse me, there's one second left. Why would you stop the clock for one second, ref? Come <laughs> on now. I thought. I'm sorry. So there's one more second in this period, but the Gamecocks have looked good. They just made a boneheaded decision. <laughs> and so, you know, it wasn't a whole lot that was about to happen in that one second, <laughs> so. Uh, we could have just started our, 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 our period break analysis. <laughs> but uh, at, speaking of which, when we come back, we will be talking about what the Gamecocks did right, what the Gamecocks did wrong, what Clemson did right, what Clemson did wrong, and um, hearing some more stuff. 
They must be tired of the sideline, but we will hear some more things from Kayla Pace and from Jordan Fina. Be right back, folks. <laughs>
and my word, what a period that was. A bunch of explosive plays from the Gamecocks allows them to build their lead and get create a big buffer zone between them and the Clemson Tigers. Exactly. The Gamecocks were at the forefront of that period. They were fast on offense. They were great on defense, and they didn't lose their heads too much in that period. Now, the one thing we have to talk about, though, is that melee we saw. The, there was punches being thrown. I think someone may have accidentally, not accidentally, may have broken someone else's nose. Oh, it was definitely intentional. <laughs> that brawl on the wall right there. Um, I mean, I think that just shows how little control the refs have over this game. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, you can hear it on both sidelines, or, I mean, excuse me, sidelines, both benches mm -hmm. that the refs are absolute. I mean, that the players and coaches are absolutely in pissed, uh, I, for lack yeah. of better words, <laughs> at the refs and their lack of calls. There's definitely a lot of confusion right there towards the end of that period and on the on, on that call because we were sitting up here and it took him about 10 minutes to make finally make that decision. Exactly. I mean, we got to talk about the fight for 10 minutes. We but <laughs> But, I mean, it's just you can see the explosiveness from the Gamecocks mm -hmm. and just the inability to create anything from the Tigers. Mm -hmm. I mean, this offensive juggernaut that they've had in the past couple games that has been all but silenced. Yeah, the only thing that they've had going well for them on the offensive side of the ball, oh, the ball, of the puck, I guess, sorry. Say, offensive no side here, of the yeah. ice is that, um, the number 11, I can't. I always forget his name right now, but he's been fantastic. He's been quick and he's been elusive. He's been getting. He's the only guy on that team that's gotten there like four or five opportunities. Exactly. But with uh, with both teams having players injected for most of the game, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't think we expected anything less from these two teams. <laughs> no, I mean these teams definitely don't like each other. All right, and then uh, what do you think uh, the team? What do you think the Tigers have to do to try to get back in this game? Oh, I think the Tigers really just need to keep their heads calm and get good opportunities because it's open. It's been open for them to go up the ice. All they need to do is have a couple more passes. They've been trying to do it themselves, and that's been the big difference for me in this game. The Gamecocks have been making those extra passes for the most part, uh, but Clemson hasn't been making passes. They've been trying to go one on two, one, and that's not going to work in hockey. I think the Gamecocks got to stay in their own head mm -hmm. and make sure that they don't, you know, get too, for lack of better words, cocky <laughs> and give up this lead. I mean, we have seen the fa in the past where they've had this lead going into the third period yeah. and just been able to, you know, give it up. And let's so. talk about the definitely mistake made by um, Jake at the end of that period as he got the, p the extra penalty. It's just unnecessary, unnecessary mistakes that you have to make. I mean, that changes, that can switch the momentum yeah. as you go into the locker room. And I think that Sir Wall is going to go talk when he's in the locker room going to tell them that there's nothing that they can they can't force anything that would help them lose this game. It's yeah. theirs to win right now mm -hmm. and the amount of mistakes they make they basically would just be beating themselves. Yeah, all all he's going to say is keep doing what you're doing, keep your heads. You've played great through two periods. Just keep it up and the game's yours. All right. Well, when we come back, it'll be the third and final period for the Gamecocks ice hockey against the Clemson Tigers. <laughs> be right back.
right, and things are heating up here in the final period between the Clemson Tigers and the South Carolina Gamecocks. Tensions are rising, <laughs> score differentials is rising, mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully that both teams can keep their heads and we can all go home soon. <laughs> what else would you expect from these two teams? Nothing the anim less. <laughs> the animosity is prevalent. These two teams have been at each other's throats. It's just the Gamecocks have had more possession time and more opportunities, and luckily for them, they have capitalized on them so far in this game. The one thing I will say, it, this, 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 this crowd out here tonight, it looks like a South Carolina student section at a football <laughs> game. I mean, this place is rocking like Willie B mm -hmm. out here. Well, not Willie B last week. We're not going to talk about last week, Ben. All right, I'm sorry. We're going to talk about how the face is starting up at the center ice. It's going to be a, four, or a five on three to start the period. Offsides. That's an offside for the Clemson Tigers. Mm -hmm. Five seconds left on the five on three, and then it'll be a, a five on four for about four, 54 seconds. The Gamecocks are going to have to work on clearing the puck for the next minute. So it's a five on three right now. Or four, no, yes, five on three. So now it's a five on four. Now it's a five on four. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think there's a lot they could have done in that, those five <laughs> seconds to try to get a goal, but you never know. Goals have been scored quicker. <laughs> it's Tigers flying down the ice, going into the offensive. Try to get a center pass in, but a little bit wide left. No one was there for the Tigers right there. Number nine for the Gamecocks almost took the ref. <laughs> We're going to say that wasn't on purpose, but you never know. I would hope not, because that'd be a lot more than just a technical. <laughs> Tigers flying down the ice, trying to get a shot in the middle. Great the save. Of, almost the knees of Bobby Lamarty. Yeah, the uh, off offenseman for um, Clemson tried to go five hole right there, but Bobby was not having it. No, he was not. He hasn't been having it at all this game. <laughs> Up to snuff, definitely not. <laughs> He's definitely enjoying uh, getting a little bit of activity. Comes a face off, won and fought for by Ben Smith. Gamecocks quickly lose possession number 14 for the Gamecocks flying down the ice. That is Nick Pisa. We haven't heard much of him tonight, mm -hmm. but uh, who knows? He could have his own back for the rest of the period. He's keeping the score right here. Ben Smith wins one of the last of the year. On the goal line, she comes out of the net. Drop pass number 12. How many times have we said Ben Smith's name tonight? He has been all over the place. He has, and duly noted, his impact has been has been made on this on this game. Gamecocks just keeping it off of their side of the ice. Tenji flying down behind the net, getting it behind the goal line. Getting Gets there. Up for the Gamecocks. Try to get a pass in the center, but too many Tigers in between. Gamecocks keep possession. Flying on the ice, number seven, Sweeney passes. Excuse me, Sweeney. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Gamecocks still have possession, trying to get something going. 21 points, one in. Wide left. Right? Nope, wide no. right. Excuse me. And Liam puck. McHugh uh, makes the save. Don't know if that puck would have been on net, but he definitely keeps it, and uh, he didn't like the amount of pressure the Gamecocks were having right there. Seven is Grayson Curry. I don't know who Sweeney is, but uh, it's close enough, we'll say. Gamecocks have an offensive face off. Jeffrey Tostrebski is again up for the Gamecocks. He's been there every single time tonight, I think. I just don't see anyone wearing red pants this week, huh? Yeah, I Maybe mean. Maybe that's the winning factor. <laughs> Last week, someone was wearing bright red pants. I can't remember who, but it was very distracting. I think it was. Was it Martone? No, it wasn't Martone. I thought it was Martone. It was one of the newer guys, I think. Okay, we wouldn't be able to see Martone because he was always sitting in, in, in oh, the Oh, that's zone. true. Yeah. Well, it's taken the refs. So There's been some here. communication here from the refs right now. I don't know what's happening. Not really sure. The game, someone from the Gamecocks might be heading back to the box? Whoa. I think they're putting, oh, they're having uh, him finish his 10-minute misconduct, I think. Uh, Drummond's going to finish his 10-minute uh, misconduct. Drummond back in the box. No stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Face off, but no one's there to receive the winning hit. Curry has it, hits off the wall. Nice pass behind the, behind the goal line. Recovered by the Tigers. 
Counts off the wall. Intercepted by 24 for the Gamecocks. Again behind the red line. Off the wall. Going behind the goal line. Recovered by the Gamecocks. That's by Sean Davis. Trying to get something going. Someone's running there. Nothing can be found. Recovered by the Tigers. Right off the stick of Jeffrey Kostrzewski. Tigers flying out of the ice. It's a bit of an odd man situation. Beautiful. Beautiful forearm save from Bobby Lombardi. Completely killing any rebound chance. That's got to be a penalty. He tried to deke around him, and I think uh, they're going to get called for a hook right there, if I'm not sure. I can't. I didn't catch the number. I think it's 23. We'll get a hook. So the Gamecocks will go back on the power play right here for two it minutes. It is 23 for the Tigers, and that is uh, me, that's green. So now I got three Tigers in the box. But... Uh, <laughs> The Tigers are finishing their penalties from that. Their misconduct as well. What they call it, the uh, pandemonium at the Plex? Pandemonium at the Plex. Gamecocks lose the face off for regain possession. Behind the goal line, all the way over to the other side of the ice. Krannis gets it, passes it over, back behind, near, or near the goal line, excuse me, passes it back to Krannis, up at the top of the blue line, passes it back to the same person he was eating from. Tries to get one in the middle, and that's a goal! Oh. It's a whisper from number nine! That is a beautiful shot! From Bobby Van Dusen. Bobby Van Dusen waited the goalie out and just hit it in the top left corner of the net. Rister from a little bit behind the offensive zone for the Gamecocks. Yeah. He just, I think he just caught the goalie, either caught the goalie off guard or. I think the goalie was looking that he was going to pass that because uh, the Gamecocks had, I think, I want to say that was. Um, Krannis kind of edging his way in. He thought he was going to hit him back, but he just snuck it right past the goaltender. And get the assist from Krannis <laughs> and the goal from Bobby Van Dusen. That was a risker, right? Gamecocks quickly regain possession and look for there to be a lot more chippiness, I think, as this differential is just getting out of hand. Gamecocks have it at the top of the ice, but they lose possession. Regain, 22 for the Gamecocks, trying to get something going. As it passes out behind the wall, just a bit too far. For number 18, behind the goal line, recovered by the Gamecocks. 12 trying to outskate everybody as he goes behind. He's got to pass that to the point. Around the net, but he hasn't done it yet. He passes it again behind the goal line. Bit of a juke from the Gamecock offensive player. Passes it in, but tries to get a backdoor pass in. Just a bit over the net. Gamecocks fighting for it behind the goal line. Hasn't moved away from that zone in about three minutes. <laughs> Gamecocks again, lose possession. Clemson recovers. Pass all the way over to the center ice, off the boot, number 17, who hits it off the skate. 17 recovers, got a bit of an on-man situation, hit in the back, you gotta think that's gotta be something. <laughs> a little bit of an interference, I would say. 17 finds himself on the ground. I, I tell you one thing, Clemson has not been patient at all no, on offense. No, they have not. Clemson lost possession, looking for the pass, 22, but he didn't, wasn't able to get it to him. Tenji passes it over to 22, not able to, to complete it. Off the glass, Tenji recovers. I don't trying know. to get something going. I don't know. Oops, sorry. I don't know how Tenji kept that from being offsides right there. I don't know either. 22 trying to get something going right off of the knee pad and out of, not out of, I guess out of play, but. <laughs> there you go. We've got some fans talking to us from below. Always nice to hear. I said, y'all been talking to Liam enough for us. We don't got to say anything to him. <laughs> but anyway, back to hockey. Sorry about that. <laughs> we, Game Packs got for the that. face off. In the offensive zone. Martone going up, wins it for the Gamecocks, stalls a bit. Gamecocks recovered, but the Clemson Tigers quickly intercept it. Poke check from Tenji. Tenji whiffs that shot, able to recover. Gamecocks and Tigers fighting for possession. Flying in the ice is number six, trying to get something going, just chuck in any kind of shot wide left from the Tigers. The tough for the Gamecocks. Oh. Uh, the Tigers. Martone going on the ice, he's got 21 on the left. He's going to try to pass it in, goes with the shot right at the knee pad of McHugh. Great. Falling down save from the queue. Great defense. I didn't catch the number, but that was great defense. He stopped the pass and made it an easier save for McHugh. Martone, but he had 21 up top. I don't think he saw him or was able to get it to him if he knew he was there. Martone getting beat up in between two Clemson defenders. Gamecocks recovered behind the goal line. I think he's got to get something up to the point. <laughs> I don't know what that pass was, but Gamecocks quickly in possession of the for the Clemson Tigers. Hits into the face of the Gamecock defender. He tried to goes up to... Regain possession, pass it out to number 17, who goes down center ice. Excuse me, number seven, that's Curry. Curry passes it out to 21, a bit too far forward. 21 has it with a big hit for number six from the Clemson Tigers as they regain possession. Missed the pass. 
Number six is fighting. Tries to get one in the middle. Passed off. Hit the stick, I think. Number six. That's uh, Boris has it for the Gamecocks. Boris quickly loses possession. A bunch of pokes are hitting each other. You can hear it on the ice. Gamecocks quickly cover Boris still on Ellis. Try to get some sort of pass. Quickly intercepted by the Tigers. Their pass is quickly <laughs> intercepted by the Gamecocks. Just been back and forth for the past couple minutes. Yeah, uh, the intensity is kind of slowed down right now. Neither team able to get any kind of leg up. Gamecocks got it. That's uh, Sean Davis. Bobbing and weaving, but hit by one too many Clemson defenders. Kostrzewski tries to fling one into the center of the ice. It's no avail. Oh, Krannis gets tripped up. Eleven flying down the ice. Nice backwards pass, but wasn't able to keep control of it. I tell you one thing though, Krannis should not have stepped no, up when he did. He it. needed to get back. He is he is breathing a sigh, he is breathing a sigh of relief right now. Mm -hmm. As they as there should have been a goal there from his miscommunication. Gamecocks got something going. Got a little bit of momentum. Sean Davis hits it back where no one is. Just really shouldn't have done that. <laughs> 14 for the Gamecocks coming over trying to get possession back for their team. Grant is fighting for it on the wall. This four check has been incredible tonight from the Gamecocks. 22 passes it out to number nine. That's Bobby Van Dusen. Had the last goal, tries to get something going. His shot attempt, I think, if that's what you could call it, is wide left. Gamecocks still retain possession. Number 22 for the Gamecocks passes it all the way down. Clemson intercepts. Gamecocks regain possession somehow, but again, quickly lose it. Bobby Van Dusen passes it to 22. 22 passes it to where no one is. 14 for the Gamecocks has it on the right side of the Clemson offensive uh, defensive zone. Excuse me, 12 for the Gamecocks trying to get some going. There was a nice pass, but no one there to get it. Puck flies up in the air off of the legs of McHugh. Gamecocks have still retained possession. 22 all out by himself. Gonna get some going with a slap shot, but nothing there to get it. Gamecocks still have possession. 24 falls on his knees. Ends up losing it for a minute, but they regain possession. Uh -oh. Actually, no, he didn't. He passed it off the wall right to a Clemson offensive man. Off. And a huge hit from 24 to kind of slow down momentum. Ref didn't do anything about it. Nice pass to himself from 24. He's going to try to get him going. Nice shot, but it's too far right. I said nice shot. <laughs> that was definitely a good opportunity, though, for the Gamecocks. They had a couple of grade A chances that were point blank, but they just didn't find the back of the net. 17 for the Tigers. Regains possession. He's going to try to get something going. Right into the glove of Bobby Lombardi, who is not phased at all <laughs> by the Tiger. Ready to pounce. Exactly. Bobby Lombardi just standing strong and standing his ground right there, uh, as you expect from Lombardi. He's he's solid all the time, but he definitely has, hasn't had that many shots, but he's definitely been keeping aware of what's happening on the ice. Offensive faceoff for the Tigers. The strips he goes for defense, wins it for the Gamecocks, but they lose possession. Shot from the Tigers is wide left. They're going to try to build some momentum as they try to keep this floating. Ian Powderly fighting on behind the wall. Gamecocks Ian Powderly with the, with the puck. He's got Jeffrey Kostrebsky to the right. He's going to try to find something going. Bobbin and Weaven trying to keep the puck in his possession, but also away from the Gamecocks. Number seven, Curry trying to get something going behind the goal line. Bit of an acrobatic move from one of the Gamecocks. <laughs> Curry still fighting for possession. Gets absolutely slammed into the wall. Now is being sandwiched by two game, uh, Clemson defenders. Excuse me. Tigers regain possession. Bounce, passes it off the wall. Kostrebski intercepts. Kostrebski's going to take it back. Try to slow down for a bit. Again, pass off the wall. And off the foot of um, Powderly. Lose possession, however. Gamecocks try to keep something going. Clemson Tigers almost, or the Clemson Tigers almost fly one in, or squeeze one in there. And, but Lombardi just gets enough of that one. I thought that one had a chance to sneak through, but Lombardi yet again standing his ground, keeping the game, keeping the Tigers off the scoreboard. Yeah. Paolo for the Tigers looking for a penalty there. But uh, was not, he's getting one? Oh, I, I meant he was looking for one to be called for the game talks. He got <laughs> called for a penalty, so that is Jacob, or excuse me, Jared Talo. Who is now in the box? There seems to be some more confusion though on the ice right now because they don't know who the penalty's on and I just told you. I mean, was on. well, it seems like they don't know why the penalty was called. Ah. Excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's getting late here at the Plex. <laughs> Night's still young, Ben. Night's still young. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what have you seen from the Gamecocks' period? Just absolute. I mean. It's dominant in a different way. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that goal was huge in the late, in this, early in the period. A great opportunity. It wasn't even a. That was the first time that they didn't have to, you know, have a pass or catch the goalie off guard. You know, if you yeah. understand. I mean, they were just going on the attack, and then they've been dominant 
for the rest of this by just keeping possession, you know, never in like never allowing Clemson to regain possession and to actually have any momentum going in. Whenever they get close, they're able to sweep it up. Exactly. It's been a little bit of a slower, not as hectic, but the Gamecocks have maintained control. Martone won the face off for the Gamecocks. Tenji retains possession. Um, our very own Jordan Beaner said uh, number 12 on the, who got the penalty got a two minute miss. I mean a two minute uh, for unsportsmanlike and a 10 minute misconduct. And also he got the misconduct for yelling at the ref. You are a joke, sir. Wow. <laughs> you really can't yell that at the ref. <laughs> well, that'll be a, the fifth power play on the night for the Gamecocks. See if they can. They're one for four on the night, so we can see see what they can do here. And uh, that'll be, I believe, it. Oh, huge missed opportunity for the Gamecocks. Wide open net, puck right in front of his toes, and there was nothing he could do about it. That's just something, I mean, in a closer game, you can you cannot afford to give up. Luckily, they're at the Liberty where they can <laughs> give that goal up right now. Definitely another great chance, though. Got to love that. Just got to want to, moving forward this season, you want to see the Gamecocks capitalize He's that. He's going to be kicking himself in the face for that <laughs> one, though. Cox got possession. Powderly passes it to Cranus. Cranus loses possession but regains it. Sean Smith with a long shot. But gotta right say McHugh kept his head up right there because that was a couple turnovers. So he was trying to Ben Smith was trying to catch him off guard and he just hammered that puck all the way into the mitt of McHugh. 46 seconds left of the power play. Offensive face-off for the Gamecocks. Smith will go up against number 17 for the Tigers. Try to capitalize. Almost right into the net right there. <laughs> off of the face-off. Bounce right in front. Gamecock defender misses it. Sean Davis is going to have to make sure nothing happens. Kicking himself for missing it right there. I think he knew where it went. Sean Davis passes it out. No, he doesn't. I lied. <laughs> Juked out of Taking Tiger. it himself at the moment. Juked out another Tiger. And then loses it. up. 16 for the Tigers recovers. 17 again, tries to get it back. But it'll go all the way over to the stick of Lombardi. He's looking to get any action at this point. <laughs> Kostrebski handling, handling the puck pretty well. But a poke check for number 11. Has the Tigers on a little bit of a one-on-one -on -one situation. And that was really lucky it wasn't a tripping, obviously. <laughs> Great defense right there. Really sold out, though. Uh, got the stick on, on uh, number 11 stick right there. Puck flying in the air. Covered by the Gamecocks. I think Sean Davis purposely went by the ref so that number six wouldn't slam him in the wall. <laughs> I feel like that's a good tactic, and I feel like that's what he did. Mm -hmm. Gamecocks trying to get something going with a poke check. They lose possession and also regain possession. Now they have lost possession. <laughs> Clemson Tigers going down the ice. Trying to get anything going. Just anything on the board. Great defense for number 22. Buck flying behind the goal line. Covered by the Gamecocks. Hit out with not enough power as he swung. And a stop at the time from the refs. That's a tripping on the Tigers. I believe it's on number six. Mm -hmm. That is Riley Baker for the game cost. And that'll be another, I mean, excuse me, game cost for the Tigers. <laughs> and that'll be another power play opportunity. For the yeah, definitely another good way to see if the game cost and get another power play goal in this game. They've only been one for, I think, five so far, which is a little rough. And considering they had a five-minute misconduct, that was, that was a gift, and they needed to capitalize on that. So let's see if they can get anything going right now. Offensive face off of the game. Cox Mike Force up against number 19 for the Tigers. Loses the face off. And it looks like the Tigers are just going to try to keep it out of their zone. They have nothing to lose at this point. Seven for the game. Cox has it. Pat. Bobby Van Dusen not able to recover. Van Dusen passes it back to Curry. Curry to Van Dusen. Van Dusen for the, for the center pass. Just a bit off. Trying to get it to Krannis in the middle. Krannis has it near the goal line. Krannis passes it back out. Oh, excuse me, not to Curry. That's the number 17. Puck kind of sliding towards the ice. 17, excuse me, is Jim Hatton. I apologize, Hatton. <laughs> Gamecocks have it down in their own defensive zone. We missed saying Hat Hatton's name for a while. He was off in China. 14 for the Gamecocks. Has it passes it to Force. 14 pounds off on the ground. A poke up from the Tigers. Right into the puck, or to the stick of Krannis. Tries to get a shot in. And merely just shoots it right at the glove of McHugh. McHugh has been solid. Yes, the Gamecocks have scored five goals on him, but to be honest, he's had to stand on his head multiple times so far, 
and he's had himself a ball game. It's just the fact that his team hasn't been able to do anything for him. You keep saying stand on his head, but I've never seen him upside down at any point. It's know. an expression, I'm sorry. It's a hockey <laughs> expression, I'm assuming? Yes. Okay, I'll learn it. It's fine. <laughs> See number, I believe, is that 18 or 8? I Tenji in? think 8. Yeah, it's 8. Tenji up for the face-off for the Gamecocks. The refs have not liked these face-offs today. <laughs> they have changed it about four times. Tenji wins it for the Gamecocks, passes it out to Martone. Martone trying to get something going as he's, in, he's kind of surrounded. That's, uh, uh, I know his name, but I don't remember the moment. 24 for the Gamecocks. That is a Conklin. I knew that. Conklin passes it back out. Tries to get something in the middle, a little bit of backdoor pass. McHugh quick to recover. A little bit of a late hit from the, from the Tigers mm -hmm. on Tenji. Thought there'd be something from there, but I guess not. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, number 12 for Clemson decided to leave since his 10-minute uh, misconduct last, lasted longer than the rest of the remaining time of the game. So we will not be seeing him back out there for Clemson. That just adds, what, that's now three, I think, that have been kicked out for them and one for us? No, two. Oh, two and one? Two for, two for them, one for us. Gamecocks from the faceoff. Center pass in from Franis. Uh, that's not, that's not Franis, excuse me. <laughs> Try to get a center pass in for the Gamecocks. Too many bodies in the way. Clemson defender got absolutely sidelined by two <laughs> players. Bobby Van Dusen keeping possession. Poke check from number 13. Clemson target trying to get something going. Another poke check from Van Dusen to stop the momentum behind the goal line. Gotta like that though, even on the penalty kill, they were, the Clemson was not afraid to go up and try and score. Curry in 27 fighting for the puck. Almost under two, two seriously fighting. 13 throwing some punches on the wall. Curry passes out all the way to number 12 for the game, Cox. That is Jack Watson. Watson tries to get something going to no avail. Behind the goal line, game, Cox still have possession. Finding the wall. Clemson trying to do anything they can to stop it. Power play is dead for the game, Cox. Bobby, excuse me, not, uh, Drummond is back in the game. Mike Force has it for the Gamecocks, trying to get anything going. Tries to pass it behind the back to 14, but he's not ready for it. Tigers quickly intercept. Huge hit on the wall, and a late hit from number 12. And I expect he's going to get called for that. <laughs> he did not need to throw that hit. And I'd be surprised if there's not some. Yep, you are like correct, I said, sir. Number 12 for the Gamecocks. Uh, that is Jack Watson, which is an unnecessary late in the game hit. Didn't need to do that. We were talking about this at the break. That's just something you don't need to see when you're dominating a ball game and just waiting for the game to be over. That's but right. now it gives Clemson an opportunity to get some momentum in the last six minutes of the game. When it's, especially in a rivalry game, mm -hmm. how sweet it is to say that you shut out the, your team, the opposing team completely. Don't jinx them there, Jack. You're not supposed to say that word. All I'm saying is that's just an unnecessary, frankly, unsportsmanlike play from Jack Watson. And you expect better from that, even in a big rivalry game. Exactly. It's it's a problem that's been prevalent over the last couple of seasons for the Gamecocks, but they, for the most part in this game, they've been pretty good about it. It's just a couple of the last two penalties they've gotten. I mean, you're up for the big deficit. Game with five minutes left in the game. Mm -hmm. Just not, not called for it. I can understand the boards are flying, but... You just gotta keep your head there. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you Sir Wall is gonna have his head for that. <laughs> Gamecocks trying to keep, keep their shutout alive. <laughs> Bit of a clear there. McHugh will come out of the net to recover. I am surprised, not for, I mean not entirely, but I after a five-nothing deficit, you'd think maybe he would pull the goalie. I don't know. McHugh's been pretty strong so far. Yeah, that's true. One minute and 39 seconds, or 29 seconds, excuse me, left in the power play for the Tigers. 18 is trying to get something going, but a little bit too high and a little too left to be in net. Gamecocks, he used a body check, I think is what you could call that. 18 trying to get something going. Poke check from behind. A lot of guys flying in the net. 11's hugging number 18, it looks like, but that's not a nice hug if that's what you want to call it. 18 for the Gamecocks. Yeah, happy. and the net comes off right there. Uh, so we will get another stoppage in play, probably back in the game Gamecocks offensive zone. For the life of me, I cannot remember Ian Powderly's name, and I don't know why. <laughs> it, it, you'll, get, you'll get there. I've gotten a lot, I think I've learned a lot more names as of, as of now, so that, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> yep, the faceoff will be in the Gamecocks offensive side. Offensive 
the face off for the Gamecocks. Trying to kill this power play. So far in the third, USC has taken five shots on net and Clemson has only had two. This is a team that's averaged 50 shots in the mm -hmm. last game and that is not apparent here in this game. Definitely speaks volumes of the Gamecocks defense so far. And the amount of work they put in in the, in the week mm -hmm. after coming off of the six, seven goals that they allowed in the last game. Mm -hmm. Gamecocks able to just trip up the Tigers, slow down the momentum, try to break up this power play. Tigers quickly recover. 13 for the Tigers passes it. Kostrzewski and one of the players help from behind. And that's a goal for the game. And that's a goal for the Tigers. Number 18. That is a pretty good for goal. That is Van der Leest. And I guess I must have jinxed him because that is the end. <laughs> well, of the Jack, you did you definitely can, did jinx you him. You can blame me. I'm sorry. In Bobby's defense, there was nothing he could do. Yeah, there, there was nothing Bobby could have done on that goal. It was a great, off. it was a great setup, great pass, and there was defense, nothing. Defense might have let him down there for a second, allowing that guy to be so far forward, uncontested. Can definitely uh, see that Bobby is uh, pretty upset right there. He wanted that. Uh, to say he shut out Clemson in this one. Knowing Bobby, he does not like giving, no matter what, this, what, what is on the scoreboard. He doesn't like giving up any goals. After the Tigers goal, after the Tigers putting up something on the scoreboard, it's a big hit for number 28 on number 14 for the Gamecocks. Gamecocks are trying to regain possession, and they will. Tigers could be recovered, and they're just now, they're just juggling around now. They're playing hot potato on the ice, but... Force tries to get something. Force lays out number 27 for the Tigers. Drummond has it going down the ice, tries to center pass in the middle, loses possession behind the goal line, able to recover as Force comes up from behind the goal line, tries to pass something yet, but to no avail. Three minutes, 51 seconds left in the period. As number, I don't know who that was, but he tried to use his entire body to, to, to stop that momentum. Stick flying free. Defender, comes the Tiger on the ground, and his body on top of him, and now they're kind of getting a little bit, a little rough and tumble over there on the corner, trying to keep possession. That's I tell great. you one thing though, Drummond looks like the happiest man in the ice right now since he's spent so much time in the box recently. Now he knows how Martone felt last game. <laughs> That's a hold. That should be a definite hold, and the, the, the ref is right there, not calling anything. <laughs> the ref is saying, all right, well, there's three minutes left, I'm gonna let them play a little bit. That's what I would say. <laughs> They got two Clemson players on the ground. That number six of the Tigers just fell of his own accord. You never really see that in hockey. Gamecocks. It is just absolute anarchy right now. Sticks flying everywhere. Bodies on the ground. Pucks nowhere to be found. Did they call an offsides right there? It's, I, I think, think they, so. Yeah, they believe they called an offsides for the Tigers. Got to be another face off. Cranes will come up. <laughs> He's been phenomenal so far in faceoffs in this one. Jumps a little bit early right there, though. A little bit finicky there, isn't he? <laughs> Big hit from 25 for the Tigers. That, and that, that ignites some reaction from the fans. That, is, he is very lucky he didn't get a tripping for that. And that will be a tripping for number 11, I believe, for the Tigers. Or is he going to call them both? Or just the Gamecocks? I don't know what's being called That is right a now. late call off that tripping, off the blatant tripping from number 11. Mm -hmm. 21 for the Gamecocks to go to the box. That is Ian Schneider. And honestly, he, I mean, he did trip him. Okay, 11's going to the box as well. Oh, yeah, I, I, I was going to say, it's definitely going to be. That is fair. Bit of a late call, but now that he had the ability to stop time, he <laughs> decided to call it. 11 for, the, uh, 11 for the Tigers. That is Andrew Rackacote, who was there tied for first in their points and hasn't really done much. He hasn't, as of he hasn't today. been on the scoreboard. He's done a lot in this that's game. True. That's, and then, that's, uh, fair. that's fair. And uh, 21 for the Gamecocks got a slash on that. That's a slashing for Ian. Mm -hmm. And now the Gamecocks lost their They won the faceoff but lost possession. Puck flying down in the Gamecock territory. Quickly recovered by Gary Cocker. Puck. They lost possession, the Gamecocks are able to recover. Number seven, that's uh, Curry flying down the ice. Trying to get something going past in the middle. Right off the stick of 28 behind the goal line. Gamecocks still fighting for it. Try to get a pass in the middle off the skate of a Tiger defender. Gamecocks try to get something going. 13 flying down the ice. 
He's got two men around him. Now he's got one in front of him. Tries to get a pass out. It's wide left. Excuse me, shot. That shot went just across the crease. No one there. 25 trying to get something going. Bit of a fake shot. Game time's able to recover. Sean Davis was able to, I mean, excuse me, Smith was able to help out with that. <laughs> 10, or not 10, excuse me. Trying to get something going. Name Cox, lose possession. Cox is just trying to do anything to get some more on the board. A minute left on the four on four. Game Cox had possession. Quickly lose it as the puck flies all the way down to McHugh. McHugh passes it off the wall. Tigers recover, but then lose possession. Forced has it, passes it all the way over to 22. 22 gets a slap shot right off the forearm of McHugh. Game Cox still the puck. Hits it down to the right corner of the Gamecock offensive zone. Covered by the Tigers. Tigers flying down the ice. Miscommunication on the pass goes behind the goal line. That'll be icing mm -hmm. for the Tigers. Well, there's one minute and 14 seconds left in this game, and there's 27 seconds left on the uh, coincidental minors for both teams. So with one minute left, what, do you, what have you been liking from the Gamecocks in this last period? Just the way they've been able to come, to, they, they look like a completely different team on the ice as of last mm -hmm. week. I mean, they put that game out of, in the complete back of their minds and thought, and all they cared about was this next game. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a team in any sport, you always need to be thinking about the next game, and that's what they did today. Jeffrey trips you up for the faceoff, wins it for the game, Cox, passes it back to Drummond, Drummond to the left side of the ice, passes it over. Number 12 going behind the goal line, loses possession, Jeffrey Kostrzewski re quickly recovers, Drummond has it at the top of the blue line with a little bit of a fake pass, a fake shot, not really sure. 12 has it for the Gamecocks, that's Jack Watson. Passes it all the way back to the top of the ice, passes it again back to Jeffrey Trebji, passes it to Duncan Hickman. Hickman to Drummond, Drummond for the shot, right off the hands of McHugh. And there'll be a stop at the time, I'm not really sure why. <laughs> I have no idea either there, Jack. But there's only, there's 47 seconds left. Maybe the net came off, but I don't even know. I couldn't see. Doesn't seem like they're going to tell us. <laughs> 47 seconds left in the game. Not as many fans as there were at, one, at, at the beginning. I think they found out or realized this was a done deal. <laughs> They've definitely been a lot more quiet in this uh, period, knowing that the game's over. Quiet, and maybe... quiet being a relative term. <laughs> Cran is up for the faceoff, loses for the Gamecocks. 14 for the Gamecocks, swiftly recovers. Passes it all the way behind the goal line. Recovered. Pa Trannis completes the pass. Martone tries to fight for it behind the goal line. Cranis again gets the pass, tries to get something in the middle of the cover, intercepted by the Tigers, going all the way down the ice. Down to Bobby Lombardi. Gamecocks recovers on behind the goal line. Bobby Van Dusen behind the red line, passes it all the way over to number 18. Tigers recover in center ice. Trying to get something going, passes it off. Behind the blue line, wide left, nothing really there. Off the wall. Tigers recover in between the legs of Martone. Off the boot, off the ski of Dan News and going towards the net. Game Cox try to get a Tigers try to get a shot off. Went off the leg three times, and that is the game for the Carolina Game Cox. Yeah, the Game Cox take this one five to one. After coming off the loss of last week's game and facing an undefeated Clemson Tigers team, the Game Cox look rejuvenated on the ice. Completely different mindset mm -hmm. and just look like a completely different team. I think they completely deserve to win this game. Absolutely dominating what looked to be an offensive juggernaut that was Clemson's offense. It was definitely fun to watch and see happen live. Now, uh, stick with us because after the break, we're going to recap what the Gamecocks did right and where they're going moving forward. Here you go, Gamecocks.
And that, oops. And that's the game. What a game it was. Gamecocks come on top, five to one, and they were impressive while doing so. They were impressive in every aspect of the game. The power play went well. They, even though they only scored once, the power play was well. The defense was great. And yeah, actually, yeah, excuse me, they scored, they scored twice on power plays. Oh, you're correct. That, they had the five-minute major, mm -hmm. and they had a, a goal off of that. And then that last one from Van Dusen, the fifth goal, was also off the power yeah, play. Yeah, their defense was great, though, only holding. Uh, we talked about Clemson's high-octane offense in the early, early parts of this game. They had 50 shots, like in games last week. They only had 11 tonight. The defense really stepped it up, really limited the scoring threats for Clemson. We outshot them 25 to 11 tonight. Like you, like you said, they had averaged 50 shots in every game so mm -hmm. far. So that's a big stat for Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure it was 29 to 11. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, it was 29 to 11. That's my <laughs> bad. Like I said, not a math major. So, uh, <laughs> But um, other than that, it was just Clemson. We talked about it with uh, Sirwa before the game about the team keeping their heads and keeping their cool. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what they did for the most part, other than a couple brawls and a couple <laughs> tumbles. But uh, it was Clemson that received the majority of the penalties on tonight's yeah, game. Yeah, definitely. Clemson did not keep their head. We had that pandemonium at the Plex that I think we need to put on a T-shirt now after Jack said that. We're going to coin that phrase. <laughs> it's pretty nice. But uh, other than that, I think it was a great win for the Gamecocks. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they looked like a completely different team from last week. And now they can go in to these away games next week yeah. with all this momentum. Exactly. It's definitely a momentum builder for the Gamecocks. As, as, as terrible as they played last week, they were by far a lot better this week. It's definitely something to build upon as they face UNC Wilmington in two games next weekend. We'll be back here in two weeks mm -hmm. as the Gamecocks have their uh, – as they go away and then come back for – For Georgia. For I Georgia, think. yes, exactly. That's what I was <laughs> thinking. For Ben Parsons, for Kayla Pace, for Jordan Beaner – for Brandon Alter, for he's pointing at me, but I can't remember his name, but he's with the Daily Gamecock. <laughs> for for Mike Waddell. <laughs> Mike Waddell. That's, the, that's the Oh, <laughs> my bad. For Dylan. Dylan. I can't, I'm really bad with names right now. Oh, okay. I'm but for everybody here at SGTV and CCSN, thank you. Another big shout out to Robert McCracken and Brett Williams for giving us tips and making us better. As so. well as John Daddy for giving Lewis tips. <laughs> But anyway, thank you, have a good night, and Carolina, forever to thee.